so in, in looking in your background here, um, yeah. I've, I've come across quite a few things that I have watched as well throughout the year, shows and films you've been in as well. And to be honest with you, there's one movie that I actually came across literally last, uh, I'm sorry, last week. Yeah. And it was a movie that you were in that I actually did enjoy. And it was a movie called Management, which you were with uh, Steve Zahn yeah. and uh, Jennifer yeah. Aniston. Yeah. So I, I remember hearing about the movie, I mean, years ago, because this came out, I think, in 2010, so over 10 years ago. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Long right. Long time ago. And you had a pretty massive part in the film, you know, later on in the movie when, you, when your character appears in the film, yeah. but a very integral role uh, in helping carrying the story. Um, when I saw the movie that I picked up, it was you, right, because you had longer hair at yeah. that time. And then, but when I'm listening, when I'm watching your role uh, in the film, I realized that I was I was actually happy to see that with the role that you were playing, um, it wasn't a minuscule role. It wasn't like a role like, hey, this you know Asian guy, you know, you know Asian guy, right. Asian guy one doing a. It was actually a very integral part. Chinese restaurant delivery, right? Yeah. So, and then what kind of caught me by surprise too, because I wasn't sure if this was something that was intentional. You guys had discussed prior to you landing the role, but you had a, you put on a Chinese accent where you didn't. If you came up as not speaking English, and then Steve right. Zahn's character is like, uh, excuse me. And then later on, I'm just messing with you. Right. So, you know, and from my from my perspective is that um, I always feel like it's whatever is necessary to tell the story. You do what's, what you got to do to kind of help set to set the template and also kind of break the ice, if you will. But for you, though, when you were auditioning for the part, getting the role, were you fully aware as far as what the what the character was uh, intended on being used for? And then having seen the, the character fleshed out a little bit more, were you getting a little more comfortable with that? Because you know, seeing the, the first thing you do is pretty much like a stereotypical Asian role, but right, I'm curious for you, right. right? So I was curious if that you had conflictions about, I don't know if I want to do it this way. If we do it this way, it's got to be as a joke. And then my, my perception of how to take on that joke. So well, I was curious about how that worked for you. Uh, and once you got everything rolling. Okay. Great. No, I got you. So, uh, i you know, let me start off just by saying that in, in general, I mean, obviously, you know, when I first started out in my career, you know, things evolve. I think there are, you know, a lot of people probably feel this way. There are a lot more things that when you're in the beginning, you just go, look, I'm starting out. I got to try to do everything that I possibly can and everything. And, uh, um, and you're not as selective in the way that you approach things, right? right. Because you're just trying to be seen. Um, but as time goes on and everything and, and, and kind of just who I am anyway, pretty much off the bat in my career, I've said there are things that I won't do, right? right. And so, so when I tell my representation, like, you know, you know, uh, fine, you can always drop it by me, but um, at, at the end of the day, I have less say, and if it's not something I'm comfortable with, then I'm not gonna do it. And there's a couple of things I laid down right away. So I said, listen, these are things that I'm not even gonna audition for, so we don't have to worry about whether or not we have to say yes or no. I'm just not going to audition for it. So we don't got to worry about it. You know, mm. um, management was not one of those things. Management was actually something that was really, 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 really cool because I did this reading of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, I was asked while I was in drama school to be a part of this, to workshop this, this uh, uh, Japanese play that was being translated into English, but they still wanted to sort of kind of use a Japanese American cast just to hear it out loud at Lincoln center theater. And, and the guy who was running that was Stephen Belber. Uh, Stephen Belber is a playwright, um, you know, who wrote the Laramie Project, and and uh, and he was heading this this thing. And he ended up being the writer director of management. That was his thing. It was his, you know. And so, you know, he came up to me and he said, "Hey, I'm writing this thing that I think you would be really, really cool for. Is it, you know, can I have your contact info?" I said, "Sure." Fast forward way, 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 way later after I graduate from school and all this stuff. And years later, you know, years and years later, and he goes, hey, man, uh, I, I really want you to come in for this thing and everything. And, and I did. And honest to God, um, so I, I was privy to the entire script, right? Okay. Uh, you know, you know, scripts change, you know, yeah. you know, but you know, still I saw it and I was like, oh, it's a romantic comedy. I was like, yeah. okay, he's the best friend and everything. And that gag was already in there where I was pulling it on him. And, 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 and I'll say this, um, you know, shooting it, it, it did not feel like, uh, I felt very respected throughout the whole process. And I remember even ask, 
being asked by Stephen Belva is like, hey, and he even asked me, right? Be you know, is this an offensive gag? And I go, you know, like, listen, we're not monolithic. So what one person finds acceptable, another Asian might not and whatever. And you can't right. worry about that. You know, in, in, for my money's worth, no, I'm commenting on the comment. So for me, no, it's not. You know, I'm flipping the script on the guy and basically saying, I am fucking with you, right? <laughs> you know, I'm just messing with you. So it's not that, you know, and then, um, you know, things get edited and stuff, but, you know, there's yeah. just a couple of scenes with the mom and dad too. Yeah. Right. And everything. And there was one other one that didn't quite make it in there, but I did think that it told the story of like, look, they're in charge. You know, I don't look down on my parents. I don't, you know, you know, I still have to ask for their permission, whether or not, yeah. you know, Steve Zahn's character can work and live there and everything and stuff. So I didn't think there was a kind of disrespect uh, or, or a mockery or, or, you know, of, um, of, of Asian people or that accent, because obviously when the mom spoke in Mandarin and everything, mm -hmm. that wasn't something that was made fun of. Right. 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 Yeah. So it was me making fun of the people who would make fun of me. I thought was what that gag was about. I see. You know, so, and then and then also it was a situation I know it's like, not, you know, not getting all too deep about yeah. about a moment in a romantic comedy. But it was also in that moment. Right. Yeah. What would be the most stereotypical. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, is 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 kind of like the white hero story. And you can say, well, yeah, you're playing a sidekick and whatever. Mm -hmm. But in that instance, Mike, Steve Zahn's character is the one who who needs help, right? He doesn't have a penny to his name yeah. and everything like that. And I'm the one, you know, who is in a position to actually help him. And, and for me, I, I saw the character of Al as very much a non-stereotype, right? very much. And the fact that I'm even playing, because, and, and here's the thing with me, and I'll just say this about me is, is um, you know, if somebody asked me to do something, Right. And it's funny that you say that I wasn't trying to lessen anything. <laughs> I was I wasn't trying to lessen anything at all. So um, I walk like me. I talk like me. I act like me in ninety nine point nine nine percent of everything I've ever done in my career. And I haven't shied away. From, and just on that alone, uh, you know, even if it's subtle, even if people don't get it. Even if it doesn't register, I know that I'm not playing a stereotype because I myself walk in am not a stereotype the stereotype would you know uh, uh uh of us especially as asian males is somebody you know who's who's uh, very passive and very very right. right and all that stuff and and you know i've gotten a look you know pros and cons you know it, it, in some roles that i've auditioned for has it been to my detriment probably i don't know you know, but in other roles, has it been to my benefit? Absolutely. So I'll live and die by that sword by being me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, so, so no, I, if, if the question is, and so I wasn't really offended in any way. And I didn't think that this, this did not come on my radar as, oh, am I doing something here that's uh, degrading? No. Yeah. Well, I was bringing it up here because like, like I said, when I was watching the movie, um, it, it never, I, because here, here's the thing I, I grew up watching films of not looking at the characters as you know oh they're being asian and you know i mean yes others I, I do understand that there are films that purposely have done that where it became like the running joke if you will yeah um but you know i, I remember a lot of a, them yeah it, it, and so that part i'm not denying but but i do remember specifically as a kid when like for example like i watched rocky i've seen that movie a, a million times one of the most uh, powerful characters in the movie happens to be a black man, but it never occurred to me that Apollo Creed was a black man and he's, you know, doing things, you know, and it, 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 I looked at him as a character, as a person, right. rather than right. as a black per as a black man. Right. Um, but the only time, and I've said it before in, in the previous interviews, the only time I actually ever felt like, oh, wow, we can do this here is when I saw uh, Robert Rodriguez El Mariachi, which came out like, you know, in the early 90s. Because most of the films I've, I've been accustomed to watching have been featured a lot of white guys and, and a few uh, black actors as well, too. But but it never struck me as like, why are we only seeing these actors playing these parts? It just never struck me that way, because to me, it was always about the journey of the characters and so on. But when I saw that movie, I was like, oh, we can do this here because I'm seeing yeah. a Hispanic man doing this. And, he, and the movie's all in Spanish. 
Um, yeah. It's obviously low budget, but you can tell that he put in a lot of work. I mean, it was it was the, the, the most obvious things that I picked up on as a kid where it kind of changed my perception about, oh, I'd like to see more of this now because yeah. I would like to see myself in there as well, too. But not because Absolutely. I want represent. I mean, I did, but but that wasn't my my it wasn't the goal. It, I, I, it's hard for me to explain it because I because I still carry that same mindset that to me, a character is a character. And if there's a stereotype, it has to be very fitting if it's necessary. But even then, I'm still very like yeah. distant from, and trying to avoid that. But the point I'm getting at is that when I'm watching this movie, um, never once occurred to me to think of your character as the guy, except with the exception of that introduction. But even then, I when I saw the introduction of your character putting on the accent and then you just yeah. carry on with the story, I completely forgot all about that, the, that yeah. whole uh, uh, the, the stereotypical accent. But but to me, what I found it very interesting was that you're right. You said something about how your character was a guy that helped out the, the main man who was in need of help. And then the one right. person that helped him out happened to be a person of color. But that wasn't the to me, that wasn't like uh, um, the thing like, you know, see, a person of color can do is more about a good person helped out a man in need, never yeah. not knowing a single thing about him, but gave right. him the benefit of doubt. And it worked. No, out. Absolutely. We're yeah. on the same page. Like. The, the the thing I think for every actor of color is in, you know, uh, uh, that has probably thought, you know, and continues to think is like, man, you know, can we just play characters who happen to be right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and everything, which means three dimensional, which means full fledged, which means and the, 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 the but the, the reason why I say these things is because you can't also pretend that it doesn't exist. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and this is something I would say to anybody. So I'm not afraid of saying this shit. And I, I say this all the time and I say this all the time to young actors and, um, and especially to young actors of color, whether we like it or not. And I said this, you know, to Kuya P also, you know, whether we like it or not, whether it's fair or not, we are always going to represent more than ourselves. Yeah, that is true. Yep. Uh, in a way that is not entirely the same for Caucasian actors, because um, a lot of times Caucasian actors literally just represent themselves in that whatever their character is, you follow that journey and no one is going to blame, um, no one is going to judge other Caucasian actors yeah. based on the performance of any particular role that you see in a film. Yeah. But that has not historically been true for actors of color, the people who came before us, uh, uh, um, fair or not, were, were being judged on them. And for the kids who are coming after us, they are gonna be judged by us. Um, I come from a school of acting, um, uh, or my, 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 my first real uh, uh, serious, um, instruction in acting was actually before, you know, my big drama school. But, you know, what I learned from that teacher, this lady Marjorie, you know, who was a disciple of Stella Adler was that, mm -hmm. you know, Stella Adler came from the group theater and they said their whole thing was, listen, anything worth its salt, anything that's worth putting up on stage for the, you know, it, it is political. You have to be saying something. You have to be fighting for something. So the idea that we can get away with that is not something that exists in me, you know? Um, so in everything that I do, I don't care even if it's a romantic comedy, I don't care if it's something like a police procedural that really is all about entertainment and maybe there's no thought of any kind of, you know, social uh, uh, commentary, yeah. stuff like that, yeah. you know? Um, to me, um, I'm always aware that what I do affects others. And so therefore I can't just go, I'm not, I'm never going to just go into anything going, all right, you know, uh, uh, with, you know, without that awareness, I'm not saying that that's what it becomes everything about at the end of the day, I'm an actor and I'm playing a role to the best of my ability. But I'm always going to be aware if there is something just because we've been conditioned to be. Yeah. We've conditioned to think of certain people as uh, not as three dimensional as others. You know, like I've waited 17 and a half years of my career to have lines and say things and to be as three dimensional, something that's written to be three dimensional, I should say, 
you know, that other people do all the freaking time. Yeah. And so that, I mean, let's just be really, really real. A lot of that has to do with my ethnicity. A lot yeah. of that has to do with my race. And then what does that do in terms of storytelling? If, you know, historically, the only images that we have seen of certain ethnicities is of this like one thing. And there's not like a three dimensionality to it. What is that subliminal messaging to a child? You know, uh, uh, and you know, we can, and that's a, you know, a big conversation we can have yeah. like hours and hours and hours about. Yeah. But so, you know, like I get it. Obviously, when you approach a role, first and foremost, you know, you approach it as you would anything. You're trying to do your best as an actor to tell a certain story, right? Right. But at the same time, whether we like it or not, whether we want to or not, and whether it's fair or not, we always have a social responsibility. That's my take on it. And it's something uh, that I, I really believe in and something that I take pride in in my work. I actually, I actually like that. I really, really embrace that. So explain to me about your, your, your take on that. Cause you, you just mentioned before you have, you feel like there's a responsibility uh, when it comes to what you're doing. So uh, yeah. if you can clarify, cause here's my perception now, cause uh, it, I know it varies when it comes to person to person, but um, you know, when you're saying that, are you referring to that, what you do on this, you know, the roles you're taking, what you're doing on screen, um, are, are those responsibilities? Are you, talk, are you talking about in layers, like, who you're playing, uh, what type of character you're playing, whether it be you know for Asian roles or just a character in general, like where you're focusing on the outcome of whether it be good or bad. Are, are you talking about those type of responsible where how it'll have an effect on someone watching the film and then have that perception about what they feel like they can do to get to a position where they want to try something in the, with themselves uh, in, in life or what they may be struggling with or probably never took notice before and then they're taking notice of it now because of yeah. what they have come across. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah. I mean, all of that. Right. But it's really basic. It's really, okay. really basic. First and foremost, where I would start with this, is this. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to say, it, okay. Uh, when I first started and I auditioned uh, really, was like straight out of drama school. Right. And I auditioned for something and um, I'm not going to name names here, but like, you know, so I'm going to keep it kosher. Yeah. Casting director said, James, Oh shit you know, you're going to be fine. You're one of the good ones. I didn't understand exactly. I, I was afraid of what that meant. And then she embellished and she said, Asians can't act. <laughs> Asian actors are so bad. They can't act. You're one of the good ones. So you're going to, it was meant as a compliment. And what she did in that moment was basically, I mean, that if there is a definition of stereotyping and discriminatory language or behavior based on someone's ethnicity. I don't know how you can get any closer than what was just said, but that's not how she saw it. Right. Right. Yeah. She's a, she's a, she's a twice voting for Barack Obama Democrat. So, so of course she can't be racist. Right. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, when you basically say that genetically speaking, we are inferior to the craft of acting. Right. Yeah. That's messed up. Yeah. So on the basic level, my first and foremost mother effing responsibility is that I never, ever, ever, it's my professional standard. I hope every actor works this way. Of course, why would you, why would anyone in any field do anything less than their best? But no matter what the role is, I don't give a damn if I got two syllables and this has been the truth for when I was a student and, and everything, 1 million percent of everything you got, you know, like how fighters say, I left it all, you know, in the blood, ring, guts, yeah. and tears, everything yeah. is on the floor. You leave it on the floor because that's bullshit. By saying that, because what do we do as actors anyway? We, 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 we play characters who what? represent things in life, in, in what? In, 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 in times of, of heightened reality. We're not watching a stupid reality show. We're mm -hmm. talking about life and death situations or unique situations or, or, or conflicts, right? And everything. And in those moments, we're just playing people. We're right. talking about being a human being. We're talking about humanity in all its levels and in all of its layers. And what you're basically saying by saying that anybody who looks like me 
or of my heritage or whatever, regardless of where, where the hell they grew up, whether they actually grew up in Asia or they grew up in here, whether they're from Brooklyn, New York or San Francisco, you're saying we can't do this thing. Like what kind of ridiculous, disgusting statement is that and everything. So then first and foremost, my responsibility is to do a damn good job. So that, that makes it harder for that stereotype to exist. Here's the other stereotype, all right, about, about, and this is just, I'm coming from me, I'm not speaking for anybody else, but I think a lot of people will relate, it's just from what I've observed and experienced. Things are changing now, they are. So I'm saying, yes, great. Mm -hmm. and, and I've gotten to do things, especially recently that I've never done in my career and, and I'm overjoyed. But historically, another stereotype, once you get past the, so that's the, that's the worst kind immediately for the actor is, oh, you're perceived as not being able to act. That's a pretty shitty thing to go in when you're auditioning because, oh, here comes an Asian, right? Is mm -hmm. what they think. Mm -hmm. Here's the other thing. A lot of roles historically that Asians have been given, you know, um, you know, a lot of people point out to how you know, Asian women are, have been uh, sexualized a lot of times, right? Yeah. Sexual fantasy. And then for Asian men, the most masculine we can be is a martial artist because that's something the world can accept us as, yeah. you know, at, at best. And, and at least, you know, we are these, these uh, extremely passive, deferential, you know, uh, you know uh, basically weak people, right? Right. But... To me, there's a stereotype that's even worse than all those put together. Uh, what, but those, but that those are uh, branch off. Those, those come from this one that I'm saying, and that is historically Asian characters in 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 American film and television have not been three dimensional. Mostly in the way that we don't care. We're usually not empathetic to, to almost anything. You know, there is that stoic thing. And so maybe, you know, say you, you have a Confucius say kind of a line or some crap. Mm -hmm. But rarely was it ever that you saw an Asian character in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s on screen in any shape or form going to somebody in a cop drama say or something like say, hey, look, I'm so sorry for your loss, but I promise you, we are going to get this guy. We are going to find him. I promise you that we are going to speak for your daughter or for your son. That's something that other people get to do literally every single day in every scene, in every fucking movie, in every TV show. And you almost never saw that. What you see was somebody who just clinically gave some facts about something and never had empathy for a situation that we don't have a heart, that we were just some, you know, that we're so simple that it's just about, you know, oh, Confucius say blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. And, you know, and oh, here's your food. And oh, hell here, here's this thing. And here you go. Right. So things like, so like when Vanishing Sun came out and stuff, I mean, that was huge, man. When when you saw Dustin win in, in, in Twenty One Jump Street, that was huge, mm -hmm. you know. But how many in between and in around did you have moments like that? When you saw Hang Moore in um, in The Killing Fields, uh, it was huge. That movie was in the early '80s, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And it was about a very very specific thing in Cambodia and the Khmer Rouge and what those you know the Killing Fields, right? So. But in just regular day-to-day -day American life, are we depicted as human as the rest of us? And I would say historically we haven't been. And I think that that stereotype has made it, you know, you know, very difficult in some ways uh, to. But things are changing now on Netflix and everything, and 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 a lot of platforms. There are these, there are these things that we've never seen before. Right. You know, so. So it's changing, but I'm saying that still though, in any way that I can, in whatever efforts, in whatever my efforts, when I get on set, even if I ain't playing a character that's quote unquote written 
to be so three dimensional. I'm doing everything I freaking can to work against something that falls into the status quo category. Even if it's so subtle that it only gets picked up by you know one kid somewhere who's 12 years old. And it's not even that I wanna inspire another Asian American kid to become an actor, but just so that they, they, they can look at something on screen and not immediately think less than. Because I can tell you for a fact in my life, and I'll only speak for me, that for the large part of my childhood and even into a early, early adulthood, my late teen years and early 20s, I very much, very much had the messaging of being less than inferior. And I was in acceptance of second class citizenry. And part of that, not just, it's not all of it, but part of that is, is what we see in media. Part of that is, is absolutely what we see in the entertainment industry that reinforces what people in my neighborhood say, what I see happening in the workforce, what I see, you know, how teachers teach one set of kids and how they teach another set of kids. And, and it just reinforced, oh, right, you know, oh, no, of course, these people are supposed to do that. And I'm supposed to be here, you know, and that and I'm, that was very, very damaging in my life. And, 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 you know, and it's taken a lot, right, to, to understand why, uh, to get educated, uh, to know that it isn't a fluke, and it isn't just me. And then, and then turning it around and saying, now, what can I do about it in my own way? You know what I'm saying, right? So, so I'm sorry if I'm getting long winded. No, 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 that's fine. That's that's what fact because it because it, it it led me to something that you were saying that I it, it's it struck there's a there's a thought that came to mind where I actually happened to come across a video, and I'm actually here curious to hear your thoughts on this here too because again this yeah. the things about um you know racial racial um injustice and in, not just in society but in, in cinema so it's, it's kind of like a, I hate to say it like this but I believe it's true but it's considered to be a hot topic because. There's more awareness of it now, but and this is coming from my position. I don't, and this does not represent the channel by any means. But I always feel like that, you know, like anything else, there's always a talking point. What can we, what can we get into? Oh no, what what's going on right now that we could have, you know, where there can be a shift, and then at the same time take take advantage of the situation, whether it be good or bad, to you know, to start off and say, well, guess what, we're gonna make something out of it, like a makes make a business out of it in, in terms of what i mean by that is like we're gonna hire more people of color and give them bigger roles but then i noticed too that and, and i'm leading to my question with what, what what the video that i came across here but what i what i've come to notice is that there are more movies with people of color the biggest thing that i've come across here and and i'm and again i'm only speaking on my behalf for myself yeah. some of them are not always that good you know, it's like mm -hmm. we got people of color in the movie and then all of a mm -hmm. sudden you watch it like it's not that good. Whether, you know, whether they had uh, good aesthetics as far as the, the cameras and the cinematography, all that stuff that may look good. But the overall story may have been great, but the execution of the story wasn't necessarily all that good for one reason right. or another. Right. It could be for right. different reasons. Right. Right. So it's like I, I'm seeing a lot more of that nowadays. And then when I'm seeing that, I'm I'm starting to wonder how much of it is, it is it really that important for the people that are pushing for this that are really are pushing for those changes because the way i perceive it now is that there have been a lot of changes especially in the last 10 years and even so there, there are pockets you mentioned before about dustin newman who was in uh, 21 jump street he's also was in warrior uh yeah. he did a movie with scott atkins not too long ago and there's a, a, a number of different uh actors out there who are really really good have still worked out throughout the years whether it be in an independent capacity or not, but they still have work out there that people have never heard of before. But that can go the same for actors who are also white as well, too, who no people have never heard of that right. you know, are in that same category as far as the level of work is concerned. That's uh, that's uh, that has a certain yeah, awareness here. Right. So it's like the artistry is still the same, but the the purpose of the artistry is like the selling point. Like, hey, we got POCs now. So yeah. my question now here, and, and, and I'm sorry if I'm going long winded itself, but I came across a video with Denzel Washington where someone had brought that up to him. And I think he said this one, I don't know how you'll feel with it, but for me, I, I agree with him in that what he's people ask him about what's your perception of, you know, people of color and so on and so forth. And one of the things he pointed out was that it's really not about race. It's about culture. It, that's what it's all about. If you watch, like he did a movie called fences, which I thought was a great movie. Yeah, yeah. Play. 
Yeah, it's a it, play, right? August Wilson play. Right, yeah. My, so, one of my favorite plays. It's a good one, too, yeah. And it's the awesome. one that uh, James Earl Jones, he did, the, he did one of the first. Right, right, right. He, James Earl Jones. Fantastic. But, played Troy Maxson in the original. Yeah. Production. So when he talked about, you know, I, t- I we, did a, we did a showing for the movie, and this one couple came up to us, and they said, hey, uh, is the writer from Poland? He's like, no, he's African-American from Pittsburgh. And he was like, because the story, you know, the, 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 the yeah. culture aspect of it is – very similar to my background so he was like so that's right. the culture it wasn't the race it was the culture because again that's perception like i've this is what i perceived at home and now that i'm here someone right. else is doing that but it's with uh, it's with black actors it's like so so it was a writer uh paul so like th- there's layers to all that stuff too and that's where i think the 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 uh the separation comes in where people have these perceptions, but the the culture may not necessarily be the same for everybody. But the the approach to the storytelling of with the people of color has some similarities in one way or shape or form with other cultures as well too. When you look at my big fat Greek wedding, you can turn that into my big fat uh, Italian wedding, absolutely. and it would be the same absolutely. story. Same thing if you have my big fat Chinese wedding as well too. It would probably be the yeah. same thing, but it would be the yeah. culture that would be different. So right. there's a there's a there's a there's a whole set of layers that I'm like I'm starting to realize that I'm not saying it's bullshit. I, I think it's more about I think we have to be for me a little more educated, but that's where the ignorance comes in where everyone has this yes. position about yeah. well, we need more of this and we need I don't think it's yeah, simple, yeah. It's simple. yeah, it's no, you're absolutely right. It the, the thing is very nuanced, right? Right. But right. There, but there's a couple of things in what you're talking about. Like, so first I just want to address, like, yeah. You know, when you say like, yo, I've seen things and yeah, I've seen them too, man, you know, where, where it's like, okay, we got greater representation, but what does that mean? Right. Right. And this is where, when you're not monolithic, like we're not, you know, you can break down people of colors, like you you don't throw all of us. No, man, it's, it's, that's not monolithic. And then even within ethnicities, that's not monolithic, monolithic either. Right. So maybe there's never going to be a total agreement about something. Right. But but this is what I'll say about like when those you see bad movies and go, yeah, well, what does representation mean, really? Because if it's not good, then does that help, you know, right. or and everything like that? And here's what I'll say about it. Historically, in this country, you know how many goddamn bad movies come out all the time, all the time, yeah. most of them, most of them, you would say. And, and look, this is why it's hard to make a great movie, to make a great TV show is effing hard. That's right. why all of them aren't right. Right. 99% of stuff is, yeah, you can watch it and stuff like that while right. you're cooking or cleaning or whatever the hell and, you know, whatever, you'll be fine and stuff. You won't be like, oh, my God, what the hell is this and everything, right. but you're not going to be like moved to tears either, right? right? So that's the majority of this stuff. And this is what I'm getting at kind of like, so, but this is a separate, a little kind of a separate thing than, 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 than other stuff that you were saying for me. Hmm. Why is it that... When there could be a million, million, million movies uh, with a predominantly Caucasian cast about a Caucasian family, whether it's a holiday movie, whether it's an action movie, whether it's a romance, whether it's a drama, whether it's a this or that or the everything in between, and literally a million of them could be bad, but no one's not going to give uh, another all Caucasian cast another chance. It, it doesn't even register. It, it never, ever registers. It's just a movie, and then this is another movie, and here's another movie. But when it does come to people of color, and let's say we make bad movies, then all of a sudden, it becomes less attractive, or all of a sudden, yeah. they go, now, why was that movie with the people of color bad? Why is that question mm-hmm. even asked when it's never asked on the, you know? So that is a standard that yeah. I think is completely unfair. And that's right? that's the that's the complexity behind that too, in my opinion. Because here's the thing too, I've I, and I agree with you. And 100%. I don't want to put and I don't want to put the blame completely on the on the people of color who may have been behind this thing. Because, uh, like, honest to God, you know, um, Caucasian uh, uh, writers and producers get to fail all the fucking time. Right. And they do not. Re- this is what I'm saying. Yeah. And no one else who's not them will be judged. Well, like, oh, of course, why, why am I going to judge this guy by what this guy did? He's a different guy. This is a different dude with different writer, different cast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But why does that happen to us? Because we had Joy Luck Club. Then we had Memoirs of a Geisha. And then we had to wait until Crazy Rich Asians. Mm-hmm. 
three over the span of what four decades oh and better luck tomorrow too that came out yeah no 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 but better luck tomorrow is maybe gets a cult following and whatever but people Mm -hmm. it was not a huge studio picture oh i see what you're saying okay Okay. you see what i'm saying yeah yeah i understand every other movie uh uh (laughs) with a Caucasian cast is a studio picture and has historically been and whatever, okay, and everything. And even though Joy Luck Club was received well, it was like, yeah, but that's a movie for Asians. It's about Asians and it's like, you know. Oh, I see, your, I see what you're it, saying, okay. It doesn't have mass appeal, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not really for, you know, whatever, okay? And then Memoirs of a Geisha comes along and I'm, 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 I'm just gonna be straight and I, I'm sorry if I offend people and whatever. My number one problem with that movie, and I'm just going to go on this little side thing, is like, okay, well, the story is bad. You, which it, basically, it's a story that glorifies pedophilia. What? I don't give a damn where you said it, what ethnicities you said it with. Like, how is that a fucking compelling story? It's not, you know, and everything. But based on the the bombing of that, absolutely all across the city. CCC, you put Asians in the main cast and whatever, and it doesn't sell. You see, agents don't sell. That's exactly what was being said. That was as exactly how it turned out. And then, and then you had to wait for this, this kind of generational shift or something like that. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see where you're going so with this. So on here. the one hand, on the one hand, it's like, why aren't we allowed to fail? And then for that matter, this actually brings me back to what that uh, casting director said very early in my career. If those are the standards that you are set upon, that basically you got one shot and you better be so damn good and it better be better than so many goddamn things, otherwise forget it. Then how does one ever get a chance to build? There are a lot of actors that I admire today. I really, really do. And I'm not talking about you know just Asians, but you know, all actors, right? There are many, many actors that I admire. When they first started out, man, yeah, just like anybody would, when it's your first day on the job, you're nervous, you're tight, you're you're scared, you're, you know, you're like your heart's racing, like, oh my God, my God, you're a little tense. And that might show up in performance. Let's just be real. One of my first uh, earlier jobs, I was really tense and everything. I'm not the way that I am today. I'm much more comfortable in front of the camera. Of course I am. You know, uh, and that's how as it should be. But if you're not given those chances, then how do you improve? If you yeah. don't get a chance to fail a million times over to be in these crappy, you know, really, really bad, you know, B-rated movies, maybe even a really bad C-rated horror movie, but you break your chops, you get to be in front of a camera more, you hear the lingo and, and you understand, you know what a wide is, you know what a you know what a close-up is good. You know what it is to be in for you know, you know, more or less you you know where you get enough days in a row where where now you don't have to look the mar- at the markings on the ground and everything and you and, and blocking becomes more natural. And so now you can only focus about you and your acting partner, your scene partner, and what happens between the two of you. Because I guarantee you in the beginning when you have to do all these technical things that you've never done before, you're going to be tight. You're going to be looking at the floor. You're going to be looking at these markings and going, oh, shit. And, and the difference of being here and being here, this is the shot. If you're this, no, you're out of frame. They, they don't like that. That doesn't work, James. You got to be. And then this is what you're thinking. That happens to everybody. But if your only shot is this one shot, how do you get to improve? Yeah. If you're not allowed to fail, how do you get to be better? And I think for the longest time, it was really, really like that. Let's just be real. Mm-hmm. Let's just call it. I don't think that's even, I don't think that's opinion. I don't think that can be factually argued that that's opinion. I think that's just truth. So that's one thing. And then the other thing, the other thing about, you know, what you're talking about coaches, absolutely. It's like nuance. And this is exactly what I'm getting at too. If, if, if we can stop judging en masse in, in, in kind of a real sophomoric way. So we see a Tyler Perry thing, or we see this thing, or we see Get Out, and we go, okay, uh, 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 you know, this is what black filmmaking is. 
this is what no 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 we got to stop mm-hmm. right? right yeah this i agree is what this is what this one storyteller is saying this is what this one storyteller yeah, is saying i agree just like just like it, you know a a, a a a caucasian and i and, and i hate to sound like i'm putting caucasians in a box too absolutely my point is is that no i don't put them in a box right quite naturally i don't i don't put anybody and 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 that's but so in order to get to that place though we have to acknowledge that boxes have been put in place right yeah right right yeah. so so then you have to deconstruct like how can you go forward and now i'm going to get like you know it's you know, now this is a societal thing. It's not in just, you know, an industry thing. Mm-hmm. You had to have the civil rights movement, right? Mm-hmm. To throw in people's faces the hypocrisy of what we say we are as a country. When we talk about democracy and we talk about, you know, how we have to fight against uh, totalitarianism and, 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 and the communism in Cuba and Russia and all these places and the hypocrisy of you have segregation in America. You have different sets of laws for different sets of people. You had a Chinese Exclusion Act that lasted, that lasted, you know, from 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 bef- uh, 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 the nineteenth century into the mid twentieth century. For God's sakes, you, you you had a completely different set of rules for people that live in your country. You have an educational system where. And even today, when people talk about this critical race theory thing, it's just like the most nonsense thing. But you have an education which historically the curriculum was set by very, 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 very conservative white people. And they're going to teach us what the history of this country was. I did not know about Japanese internment until I found out for myself when I took a college course uh, by myself because of my own curiosity in my 20s. Mm, Yeah. You're telling me that that doesn't have an impact on American society and that's not directly connected. Okay. It was illegal until the early seventies where people started enforcing. It was still illegal. There was still on the books, sodomy, sodomy laws in almost half the States in this country for a person of two different races to be in a romantic relationship together and to get married, even though there were Supreme Court cases uh, that, 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 that outlawed that practice on state laws in books because in practice, right? You can say, hey, you can sit here now. You can use this bathroom and whatever. But if the culture doesn't change, do you really think it's still easy for that guy to go into that restaurant and to go use that bathroom? If the structure of the society hasn't changed and this town lives on a fucking dirt road because they're a poor minority and the state for the longest time were, was racist as hell. And so had, you know, said, no, we're not gonna fix roads. You're not gonna have paved roads. You're gonna live on dirt crap. You're gonna be living next to a, a shit factory that sends raw sewage into your drinking water. And if, does that change just because you now have the right to sit at a lunch counter? Does that change because now you, you, you have the right to go into Macy's? and sit next to this guy, does that change? Because now on this bus, you can sit where you want. Those things didn't change. Right. So a- that, that trickles down into right. what we see in media because those things only reinforce second class, third class citizenry, right? Right. These, these people suck and these people are better. Right. These well- people live in shitty homes. These people live in better homes. Well, so, that's the thing, though. Like, I, I'm sorry, I'm interrupted, but there's something I want to point out real quickly. Was that um, it was another thing that I've also noticed too, because I think a lot of people have, because since we're getting kind of like the more political side of it here, but yeah. I think a lot of people have this perception of that, you know, when Barack Obama had come into, into office, that you know, there's this is going to be a set of changes that will occur. You know, people have their opinions about how he ran things, and you know, and and I understand that, but the point right. I'm getting at is that having him in office didn't necessarily mean for me that the entire country is going to change for the better. Right. It just simply meant that, okay, hey, so now there has been a, a push against the, you know, there's a push on this system that wasn't there before. And now we have seen that, but we right. can also see the resistance that also came with that as well too. There's, there are a lot Absolutely. of people who had a lot of problem with it where they may have not agree with his politics, but 
the you know his his you know his his background was an issue for a lot of people and even till you know with the last election with trump uh, when he prior to him getting to office where is he even american now so then it became like you know is right. he legitimate so like there so clearly a lot has not changed all it really did for me is, is, is see is that as those major changes had occurred the you know society's you know i guess uh overall thought process of how they really perceive things started to get exposed more and more and more especially now with social media where everything's as out you know out in the open for everyone to see exactly. and i think the internet has certainly changed a great deal where you can really see perception how certain news organizations uh, look at certain things and other more independent ones also look at things as well too but are they looking at the same lenses as these right wingers as these left i mean there's a whole thing about all that as well too but all I, and i agree with you 100 percent changing the laws didn't necessarily mean that everyone changed with the laws. It just, it just simply means that, Hey, these right. are the rules now that are in place. You got to right. abide by them now. And then they said, okay, well, right. we never said anything about doing this. So we're going to do this now. So they found yeah. loopholes to yeah. kind of set the standard for themselves and then push everyone else out of the, uh, out of this uh, circle that they had created for themselves. Yeah. So it's like, it's a very complex thing, but I, uh, you know, and that's how I look at the films too. Um, but I mean, you were, you were getting to a point and I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just wanted to uh, point that out that I agree with what you're saying. Um, and I don't think it ha there's really any straightforward answers about how to get this resolved, because I think what it really comes down to is how people treat themselves at home and how, and who they've grown up with there, because it all really, in my opinion, yeah. it all starts what from you home. know, it's right. what you know. So it here's all starts the thing. From home. but here's the thing, you know, uh, uh, and, and listen, man, I'm going to be the first to admit, man, uh, you know, Right. And, and look, I'm not a representative of this business. Like who the fuck right. am I? Right. But, <laughs> but I'm in it. Right? right. Right. I am in it. And, um, again, I'm just speaking for me. I right. never look to the business to be the, like a lot of people, especially the way that it gets talked about in mainstream media is the Hollywood entertainment industry is run by a bunch of, you know, leftist liberals who are trying to dominate and, and control how we think and all this, you know, the, you know, those people who say that, it couldn't really be further from the truth. At the end of the day, like any other business, it is a business and it mm -hmm. is going to go where they think is business is going to do well. I have never looked to entertainment. I have not, I've never really looked to a lot of mainstream institutions to be the thing that, that, that moves society forward. If you really, really think about it, right? And it's not just because I'm a sports nut. Mm -hmm. sports has done way more i agree way more i agree with you way way more for equality listen man listen man there was a time in america where the only place where there was not segregated seating where where you didn't have to like worry about somebody getting like literally murdered um because a black person was literally sitting next to a white person might even brush up against them might even give each other a high five complete strangers there was one place in America that was happening on a consistent basis, and that was when the Brooklyn Dodgers were playing, and, and at Ebbets Field, there were fans in Brooklyn who were watching Jackie play, and even in Brooklyn, the you know, a lot of people don't know, like, there were a lot of people who were against Jackie, too, but with the people who yeah. weren't against Jackie, there were people in the stands fucking in the 40s, way before Brown versus Board of Ed, way before the desegregation of America, that was rooting for Jackie Robinson together. Yeah. Hollywood didn't do that. Hollywood still had a rule against interracial kissing. There could not mm -hmm. be an interracial kiss. And therefore, so there was, there was all kinds of blackface and yellow that you could say the worst mm -hmm. kinds of shit, you know, uh, there's a documentary out there that some of our most beloved uh, 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 historical, you know, old time movie stars, you know, the, the Mickey Rooney's and the Judy Garland's and the right and all those mm -hmm. people from that era. My God, how racist those things that they were in. It's insane. Yeah. So I've never looked to Hollywood to be like this thing that that that, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 in Hamlet, it's the line that's used all the time by people who talk about what we do as an important social um, 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 thing as artists, you know, we, we hold up the mirror to society, right? And stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Rarely ever do we actually really do that, I think, you know, and stuff. But, but things are changing uh, 
uh, now. And so what I'm saying is in my own way for our own part in the entertainment industry, what we can do to address the kind of thing that we were just talking about before, right? right. To do our part is, is, is to do the work of, you know, everyone's got different opinions. So right, wrong, you know, right, left, uh, 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 I agree with this. I don't agree with that. Oh, that's a shitty movie. This is a good movie. Let all that content get out there. Let it become more normalized to the point that we don't say this is a black story. This is an Asian. No, it's a human story that yep. happens to have black people. It is a human story that happens to have yeah. uh, Asian people. It is a human story that happens to have uh, uh, a majority a uh, uh, Muslim American cast. It is a human story that happens to have th this group of people, right? You know, and stuff. And the and 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 the only way I think you get to that is 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 to resist the thing of well, these four things weren't so good, so maybe we shouldn't we shouldn't maybe we should dial it back. No, 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 no. Let it all be out there. Let everybody consume it. Let everybody judge for themselves, but let it be out there and let it be more of the norm. The, the wrong thing is to say, yo, these four movies with a majority something cast did not do well, so that's got to be dialed back. That's, that's definitely the wrong way. I don't care if we put 12 fucking movies out in a row that suck. The most important thing the most important thing is that eventually um, what you hope for is that the landscape will be exactly what it is for everybody else. And that, you know, you're just looking at stories and some people are going to gravitate towards these and some people are going to gravitate towards these. But at the end of the day, you're not going. It sucks because these people are in it. It sucks because these people were behind it because right. people are fucking people. Right. 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 And yeah. so the only way though, but you have to address the boxes first. You have to know what the boxes are so that you can begin, you know, to break them down, you know? And so for me, I'm very, very, very cognizant and aware of the things that, 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 that I personally want to fight against uh, in what I do. And, and the easiest way to fight against it, like I said, is, is to not even, it doesn't even have to be that dramatic is, is like, listen, all right, I see this, I read this, and I go, okay, this is not for me. I'm not going to judge somebody else. You know, everybody's got to do their own thing. Everybody's got to decide for themselves what they're comfortable with, but you know what, not even going to go in for it. Boom. You know, you mentioned about, um, cause you, you, you talking about sports was also, uh, the, the, the one, area where anyone can just join in and have and can unite on in something where uh, they can just sit down and enjoy what's happening in front of them and for me one thing i always pointed out before too is that uh i, I you know I'm, I'm i'm sure you are as well too a music lover but music for me was also in a lot of in, i think in so many ways like, like sports but maybe this is my perception but maybe a little bit yeah. more so in with music where it was ahead of the curve because you if you think about it you have a number of artists who are so integral in formulating new sound and a lot of them were happen to be people of color yep. but the, the thing about it though was that to me my perception if you look at guys like uh uh who's the rolling stones uh jack mick jagger excuse me had said that one of the best performances he's ever seen in his entire life which he thought was going to be uh wasn't legitimate where in terms of from the stories he's heard is when he saw little richard he said when i saw little richard that was the by far everything you heard about little richard live you know performance wise is all right. true. He is amazing, but not once, from, my, from what I can remember, did he say he is an amazing black artist. He was like, That's he was right. amazing. That's right. But he was That's a white right. guy that said that. But then you look at Jimi Hendrix. How many people has Jimi Hendrix inspired? Mm -hmm. Did anyone ever look at him? At least I'm sure they did, but uh, and I'm sure there's plenty of stories about that. But, but I don't recall any one of those guys who were inspired by Jimi Hendrix saying like he was a great black guitarist. It was more exactly. he was a he's exactly. one of the greatest guitarist exactly. players of all time exactly he just happened to be black and he and not only was he black That's right but if you think about what is one of the most iconic songs here in the united states is obviously the uh, star spangled banner but if you think about the way he had done it it's possibly one of the most iconic renditions iconic of, yeah, of, of, that, of, of, the, of the anthem here but it's right. done by a black man 
who a lot of people look in, in such high regard. So there's a different set of like artists out there who happen to be POC. And I, even as a kid, I remember distinctly thinking that um, that it never seemed to me as a black artist or as a white artist. It was more about because uh, you look at bands like Bad Brains, uh, who are based out in D.C., they're all black. But not once did I ever think of, oh, they're a black uh, punk band, you know, or when you look at groups right. like um, what's another group out there? That's um, I'm trying to think of a group. Oh, uh, like Queen, for example, the, the lead singer is Asian is an Asian man. Um, and he also happens to be gay. But was that I mean, it was a thing as far as his sexuality is concerned. But when you look at the group overall, the biggest meeting yeah. with that group, sure, all the are all the other members. They definitely did contribute. But the, who is the face of the group? No doubt is the, the POC. Right. Right. Like, was it ever like, oh, he's Asian. Like, look at what he said. No, it was always about him as an artist. Right. And that's how I always perceive Freddie to be as because. Right. In my Absolutely. Mind, he's it's the greatest just a genius of all time. Right. A he's, a, he's the greatest, he's genius, the greatest right? frontman of all time, in my opinion. But he just happens to be a gay uh, person of color. But never once occurred to me to look at him as he's a POC and therefore he said, st- st- no, I, he's a human being who happened to be POC. And he was exactly. so good at what he did, but no, I mean, absolutely it, right. But, right. but you know, and gonna... I hear you. Right. And, and, and this is, this is the only thing that I would say to that is right. Ultimately the goal is we wish there weren't these phrases, right? We wish we didn't have to say BIPOC or, Right. Or, or or this and 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 all these designations and what i'm getting at is the what is the origination of those of those designations though those weren't designations that we came up with mm. those were designations that were put upon us by us by 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 history by legislation by the innate racism racism that was built into the fabric of this country let's just be real right we don't teach history correctly in this country so I agree. you know and and the other thing that i would say about it though is like you know and and this is changing don't get me wrong i'm not trying to say like oh my god you know like we're living in the worst times but what i'm saying is those like it is kind of fucked up too though yeah that you had to be Jimi Hendrix, right? Mm-hmm. Because you could be a brother who looked just like Jimi Hendrix, but if you didn't have even, you know, but you weren't going to have even one. Oh, I see where you're going with this here. Okay. One, even one thousandth of one percent of his right. talent, they're going to look at you like you're some. You're not going to get a loan. Mm-hmm. You're still going to, you know, you're not going to be allowed in this church. You're still going to not allowed to be doing this and this and this. This they're going to tell you that if you move into the neighborhood, the property values are going to go down. Right? Yeah. That's that that's the reality that I think you know has permeated through through I mean, what it is what is it to be an American, man? It's like the most fascinating fucking thing. It's what I love about this country and also yeah. the grappling with that I fucking hate about it because <laughs> everybody wants to, you know, there's a big strong group of people that say, no, this is exactly what it is. We are it. All you are a bunch of visitors and we're the ones that allow you, we're the gatekeepers and allow you. And if we say, okay, you're one of us or you're not one of us, then no, and that's bullshit because being an American is literally an experiment, right? (laughs) There's no such thing as a genetic American. You can say the native American. I know you're saying, yeah, I know where you're coming from. Right? I know where you're coming from. But there are totally people here. It don't matter that you're naturalized. Yeah, even just legislative, I mean, even just as by 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 mere nature of law of the land and depending on where you were and, and the and the culture that existed, right? Because even again, uh, um, everybody knows that de- desegregation was a very messy business, right? And it right. and it, it didn't exactly roll out in this like u- utopia kind of freaking fashion, right? Right, right. Um, And the reality still exists that in many, many, many ways, a society is segregated. It may not be by the law of the land, right? But uh, I mean, let's just be friggin' real. You know, there are plenty of places, you know, that you and I would be unwelcome. Sad to say, but in 2021, that's just before they know who we are, before they even know what our politics are, what we think about anything, what we think about any, before we even open our goddamn mouths, mm-hmm. 
you know, excuse my language, but yeah, fine. you know, where, you know, so that's not fun. You know, that's not fun. And, and so this is where I do feel like media can be very, very, very important and influential. And, and therefore it is incumbent upon people. Uh, l- listen, I'm not going to say, cause I know I probably am coming off as some fucking stand on some soapbox here, sounding all self-righteous. No, I don't perceive that at but, all about you. But no. I, I, I'm, I, I am a person. Who, I know what my values are. I know what they are. I know what I believe to be true. I know what I believe to be is, is, is right and just. And, and as much as I can, and I'm holding myself to this, you know, yes, I want to work in this business. Yes, it's hard to come by work in this business. Yes, you know, do I have to kind of bend a little and do I compromise sometimes some things in order to, you know, uh, to, to play a role? Yes, I have. But I have to be aware of that. Right. And I also have to be aware of what the line is that I'm not willing to cross because I have to be responsible. Right. Part of this, there has to be a responsibility, um, a known, aware, embraced responsibility on the storytelling that you're doing. Because if not, then... You're just a, you're just you're just a feather floating in the breeze, man, and letting it take you wherever the heck. And that's not very empowering. That's not very grounding. That's not very. Um, it's very unfocused. It's very, it's very whatever can happen to you. So, you yeah. know, as much as we have to navigate, especially if you're starting out in your career, and you kind of sort of just you're just trying to get anything i think the, the more you go on in your career maybe very early on just have the courage have the courage to anybody out there anybody out there brother that 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 you know watches and listens to you you know you're stronger than you think your your voice matters no matter how small you think that voice may be oh you're not famous you don't have a trillion instagram followers whatever or any of those things i i truly believe without you know risk of sounding corny as heck every single voice um every single voice that is principled no matter no matter how large the audience that their voice reaches it, it matters and it's important. So, so in whatever capacity uh, that we can be aware and, and, and represent the ideals and the values that we actually have, it's extremely important. And to make decisions based on that is important, you know? Um, so so in, that, in that way, I think the industry can, it can have a very, very important role in, in again, deconstructing these boxes that have been uh, placed and, um, and getting to that more perfect union that we're talking about because right. perception is everything. Perception is everything. If you believe in something, you're yeah. gonna believe it. And well, so how you, can, how you can, in your own way, fight up again, you know, the things that I don't agree with, the things that I don't believe in, that just that 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 some people are pushing, it's it absolutely is incumbent upon me to 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 fight against it. I can't just go with that, you know, be like, oh well, you know, everything's 50-50. No, man. No. No, I've got a responsibility. I do. So whether I like it or not, I do. Let me ask you something about uh uh something here for because I, I'm going to share my experience about this here and I'm, I'm curious to hear your your experiences and perception of all this here because um, you know you talked about how you know we it's true there are be, there will certainly be some places where we make uh, go into some certain areas that we're not going to be welcome that part I do agree with here but the thing for, from my own personal experience is this I mean you hear the way that I talk and I don't talk like a uh, stereotypical stereotypical Hispanic you know I've been told that I've talked white and as on more than one occasion 
Um, because it's, it's funny because I grew up around friends that have that street vernacular. I've grown up around that. It's been around me for a good portion of my life in my, my childhood up to my adulthood, but I've never gravitated to speaking that way. I've always, I've, I've always liked more of the, 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 the clear cut of just hearing what I'm saying, because for me, that was very important for me. You know, when I'm saying okay. something that's important for me to make sure that what I'm saying makes sense. Right. Uh, not to have anything against the street, but that's, that's not what I'm getting at. But the point I'm pointing that I'm getting at is this. Whenever I come around to certain jobs or whatever the case may be, there has been a few occasions where I had somebody come out and they'll ask me, um, oh, where are you from? And I'll tell them, well, I'm, I was born here, but my family in Nicaraguan. They said, well, you speak great English. I said, yeah, because I grew up here. You know? yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I, I grew up here, though, just like yourself. And then yeah. they're like, yeah, but you know, so was English your first language? I like, actually no, Spanish was my first language. So you can speak both. Yeah, I can speak both. But yeah, your English is really, really good. Where did you go to school? I was like, yeah. I went to school here in the United States. I mean, I went to, I mean, to the school, uh, wherever I was living at the time. So I, I go into the, to these, uh, these conversations with these, uh, with these guys, and they always were ca Caucasians, usually older people. Mm -hmm. Very few that have actually just not brought up the the race aspect of it too because another thing i was also pointing out as well as a kid even as i got older is that you don't look hispanic which is i it's not uncommon for me to hear because right. you know my wife is a spaniard peruvian but when you look at her she looks caucasian because that's the the uh yeah. the bloodline in spain they look mostly caucasian right. when you look at my son he looks caucasian he does not look hispanic at all europeans right europeans, right so yeah. when you look at me the perception i've got is that you don't look hispanic but now that i'm seeing it I know now that you're telling me, I can see it. And so all of a sudden, like the floodgates open, like, oh, I, I can see a little bit of this and that as well, too, because they had this perception of me at the time until I explained my background. Then they can look back. Oh, I can see the, right. oh, I can see the, the, you know, so anyways. So my, my experience with that has always been kind of like, not necessarily a mixed bag, but it's almost all over the place. Mm -hmm. The biggest uh, setbacks I've had, when I wouldn't say setbacks, the biggest um, prejudice I've dealt with here. And again, I'm not saying this is this was like this for everybody, but for me, I've seen a lot of prejudice with within my community, where you're not Hispanic enough, or you're not, um, right. you are certainly not, you don't know, you don't speak it as, you don't speak Spanish as well, uh, right. or I've had right, parents right, who right. were immigrants in this country, and they couldn't speak a word of English. And I'm not here to to insult them in that regard, but they couldn't speak a word of English. And their children can speak Spanish, probably according to them, better than I could. But yet they've come to me to translate for them, and they were criticizing me. And I'm asking them, like, well, so if you don't, if if my Spanish wasn't good enough, why have you come to me in the first place to help you? Right. And it's like, well, you know, it's you you have to help the elders. You have to help. The, so it's like these standards are already set in place. Where right. for me, and I'll be honest, and this is again, I'm only speaking on my behalf. My experience has always been like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a butler for someone to cater to, you know, to assist them when things and how I perceived it at that time was they should have figured it out for themselves. Uh, right. And I'm not saying that to be prejudiced. I'm not, that's not what I'm going. But at that time, I thought to myself, my parents busted their ass to work in this country and work really hard to get where they are. Right. And, you know, although they did at times struggle with English, but they still put in the effort. My mom went to school right. at night to learn English, right. spoke with me in English, which kind of yeah. like, you know, kind of like it was a testament to me speaking Spanish is because it was me trying to help her and standing with my dad, too. So there was there were a lot of things that were that were they were doing that I gave them a lot of credit for for sticking to it. And it paid off, you know. But when I'm looking at other Hispanic uh, parents who have this perception like you have to do it the way I do it and you can't do this good enough, but I still need you to help me. So it's like then why are you here? Why are you insulting me and then ask me to help you out? That happens a lot from my perception, I believe, with a lot of POCs within the communities where that if there is okay. a standards that are set in place. Yeah. So my perception at, at the time was like, I don't want to be a part of that because it's not healthy for us. And secondly, I'm not going to, I'm not going to assist in, in, in helping people who are disrespectful to me because they felt like I, it's, I, I owe it to them or that I'm obligated. And that's not how I want this to, to approach things. And right. I think that would, it was in a lot of times was a detriment where I've actually come across with some people who I won't name, of course, they said, I just don't want to do this anymore because it's a responsibility, but I have to do this. I was like, no, you don't. You know, why do you have to follow through those traditional set of values that don't, 
makes sense is actually holding us back rather than pushing us forward. If anything, if a person needs help and they genuinely need help, we should be able to help them as best as we can. But I'm not going to sit there taking insult because it's not my my Spanish isn't up to par to their right. Spanish, but yet they've come right. to me for help. So there was a big problem that I had with that. So then as time has gone by, I've obviously my perception has changed a little bit. And when you learn about their background, you realize, oh, wait, it's not as clear cut as I thought it was. It's actually a little more complex. And then you realize, OK, so there's more to the story. So right. I've changed a lot when it came to that. Um, and I know I went along with it as well in this one. But for you, though, growing up, uh, being yeah. from from Brooklyn and having that background uh, and in, you know, and, and, and growing up, you being because uh, your father is, I believe, is Taiwanese and your mother is Japanese. Is that correct? Yeah. So you yeah. have the two different cultures, you being Asian American in Brooklyn and then growing up in an environment where there's a, a melting pot of different cultures around there. So. I'm not sure how it was like for you personally. And then have you had any sort of experiences like that where maybe your perception changed a little bit about how, you know, something's not right about w with what I've been, what I've been told and what I'm actually seeing. Oh yeah. Look, in, in, in every which way, if I can respond a little bit to what you're saying, see, this yeah. is exactly, you know, this is great because, you know, we really, we got to break down sometimes, you know, uh, uh, phrases and labels and everything. Right. And it's like, yeah. What group is really like, what, if, if we were to say, you know, Asians are, Hispanics are, African-Americans are, right. right? And you become that monolithic, monolithic thing. Right then and there, you're, you're, you know, already doing a labeling that just isn't, isn't helpful and isn't accurate, right? Right. And the reality is, is of course, you know, right, even within our, are you kidding me? You know, I've been told that um, <clears throat> I've been told by Chinese people there's not one one stinking ounce of Chinese features in my face whatsoever. You're clearly Japanese, and then Japanese people have said the exact same thing. You don't look Japanese at all. You're clearly Chinese, right? Right. And then, you know, I've been in situations where. You know, I met Japanese people and just because I didn't want to lose the language because I learned Japanese from my mother. My father was old enough to be my grandfather. And so he grew up during the Japanese occupation of Taiwan during the war. And so he spoke Japanese as well. So the only other language I knew other than English, but the problem that the, the, not the problem, but the thing was, you know, we're growing up in a neighborhood in Brooklyn where there's not a single other Japanese speaking person like fucking anywhere. Mm -hmm. So the only place that you were going to speak Japanese was with your parents. Now, my mom passed away a long, long time ago. Um, um, both of my parents have passed away now. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, I didn't want to lose my language, right? I didn't want to lose, you know, Japanese uh, and everything. I loved my mom to death. And so I, I didn't want to lose it. So when I, when I had opportunities and I, you know, at school, there were Japanese students from Japan, right? You know, uh, I would say, hey, man, if you wouldn't mind, could you talk to me? Could we converse and, you know, just so that I can practice and stuff? And they go, oh, sure, 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 sure. So then I'd go up to them and I, I would, I would uh, say something in Japanese and they'd only respond to me in English. And it was their way of telling me, you're not good enough. You're not one of us. You're not really Japanese. So, you know, and it was obvious because they refused yeah. to speak to me in Japanese, right? So yeah. that was crappy, right? That was crappy. And, 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 and absolutely, uh, uh, you know, without getting into specifics, but, uh, um, you know, you know growing, growing up is tough for everybody, so I'm not trying yeah. to say, but, but growing up was very, very uh, tough for me, absolutely. And uh, there were certain periods of my life when I was younger that... Um, you know, we're really, really scary. So, so, and I didn't, I didn't ever quite fit in um, anywhere. And, and, and I, and I kind of, you know, said this before, but there was a point that I also reached that I hated the skin that I lived in. Yeah. I, uh, I desperately about. wished, like, why couldn't I be Italian yeah. like everybody else? Why, why couldn't I you know, there were like unwritten rules in my neighborhood. There were stores that I absolutely, I mean, legally, right? I could walk into them, right? Legally, it would be against the law to deny me service based on 
my ethnicity right at this yeah. point. Yeah. But I knew better because it's not like, you know, even my neighborhood in Brooklyn is very, very different than like being in Midtown Manhattan. Yeah. In Midtown Manhattan, if I were to walk into uh, uh, some restaurant and they say, oh, you can't come in here and everything like that, I could probably make a stink sue you know call abc news or whatever but in the neighborhood that i lived in which was very isolated and insular the idea that you'd complain about it and then you'll have like 15 dudes with baseball bats show up at your apartment right yeah yeah <laughs> and 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 and, the, and yeah. are the cops going to come and help you no of course not because you know they'll be one of the guys with the baseball bats yeah. so there were places literally within blocks of where i lived where I knew was off limits to me, a fucking bakery, a fucking coffee shop. Yeah. And I was in acceptance of it. Yeah. You know, I, it didn't bother me. I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not supposed to go in there. That's sad. That's bad. That's not yeah. good. And, and so... So there was that. Now, what I want to say is that all these things are true, right? Yeah. You can get absolutely discriminatory, some of the most vicious kinds from people within your quote unquote own community, because yeah. like for you, you're not, you're, oh, 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 you know, you know, but you're not white, right? So you're not one of us. Okay. But you know, you, you, but your Spanish isn't good enough. So you're not one of us here either. And so, you know, and whatever. And that absolutely happened to me as well. And all of that is true. Yeah. And at the same time, what is true, though, is that structural institutional racism, right, I think is ultimately uh, more damaging than everything else. Because in my own way, I it's a lot easier for me. And I'm speaking for me too. Right, Rob? Right. I'm, yeah. I'm saying, look, man, you over there, you don't want to talk Japanese to me to help me out, even though you said you would and everything like that. And you just did that just a big stick, a big F you and, you know, middle finger yeah. in my face. That's your prerogative. That's your right. You know, what else is my prerogative? I can say, you know what? Kick rocks, peace. Fuck you too. Yeah. And, and you don't have to be a part of my life. And yeah. I have the agency to just as equally look at you and be like, you know what? You're not my kind of people either. So, you know, peace, yeah. love, and happiness, man. Good luck with you, but I don't got to talk to you either. And just because you're going to discriminate against me, it ain't going to stop me from being me. What structural, though, institutional racism, though, is I don't think my agency is as strong. I don't think my voice is as big and I don't think I can just dismiss it as easily as I can, you know, someone who in my personal life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tries to make me less than. Because I'm educated now, because I've worked on myself, I've really, really worked on myself. I know what my values are. I like who I am today. I ain't perfect, but Mm -hmm. but I like who I've evolved into. I can be like, you know what? That's your right. You don't like me for whatever reason. You know what? That's your prerogative. I feel bad for you. I feel sad for you. I'm going to pray for you, but you know what? I'm going to go on and do me. Mm. But with structural and institutional discrimination, nah, that's something bigger that needs to be kind of very deliberately um, and on a daily basis, <laughs> you know, yeah. sort of kind of chipped away at. That's not something that I have that much agency over in the same way that I can just say, you know what, this person's got their set of ideas and I got mine, so whatever. Right. And, you know, and so that is what I would say, you know, is the difference. Like, dude, we can be discriminated by fucking anybody absolutely yeah, yeah i'm not taking that i'm not turning this into yeah. a caucasian versus the rest of us thing right but but there is within this nuanced conversation there is though a difference between structural institutional historic deep embedded 
uh, uh, um, structural uh, racism, discrimination um, versus, versus the other kinds that as adults especially, and as educated and informed people, we can, we can deal with, right, on a personal basis. You know, you, here's the thing that I also, because um, uh, I, I love that we're getting this topic here because the, the, the things that I've also come to notice here too, like I'm sure you may, may have seen some videos uh, online where you have people, PO, POCs, hanging out, let's say in this case, with Caucasians, right? And they themselves are joining in on those discriminatory rants that are being thrown at us here, right? Right. What I've also noticed here too, that, and I'm the, I, I don't necessarily chime in on it as much uh, or pay, I wouldn't say pay too much attention, but I just don't comment it in as much because to me, it's all ignorance on both sides of the coin. So when you have a, a, a POC hanging out with Caucasians and the Caucasians saying something about you people are this and that, and then that POC is in there too, yeah, you guys should you know, mind your business, whatever. And then the people on the opposite side that are receiving these comments are like, you know, fuck you, asshole. You know, you're 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 the problem because people like you who side with these white folks and they're saying all these things. And I remember I'm thinking to myself, this is literally what what is like conservatives and liberals where they're just clashing, but they're not talking. You see what I'm right. saying? They're not talking to each other. They're just simply shouting rhetoric. And they and, and this is the part where I and I, again, I'm speaking on my behalf. I believe it's all yeah. it's a lot of ignorance about how they, their, their inability to really communicate with one another. In my mind, I, how I would love to have seen it uh, in, the, in one particular bit I had came across where um, it, was a, it was a woman who, I think she was, she, I think she was Asian too. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to single her out like that, but I'm just saying that it was, it was, a, it was an Asian woman who was shouting some rhetoric against some people of color on, uh, on, on this, uh, at, at some store. And everyone shouting at her and just belittling her. And I remember thinking, man, if you guys just really took took the time to say, you know what, lady, we're not all bad people. And you have gotten this perception, this education from somebody who was as ignorant uh, as everyone else. In reality, we're not bad people. And it's a shame that you don't that you don't realize that, because you know what? You yourself can be an incredibly good person. And we probably don't know that because we haven't had the time to spend time with you. Because now everyone's gonna get this perception of you. Like there's a there's a whole thing about how I would have loved to have seen how this water wouldn't play it out, but obviously it didn't. They're just right. shouting shit at her, and then she's like, "You see, then yeah, I'm right because you're right, uh, Bob. Because you said these people would do that, and they did, and then they they continue on with that pattern. So it doesn't help, is the way I see it. And again, that's just that's just, and my perception is that it's a, it's a lack of uh, of the ability to communicate and articulate those okay. thoughts. <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, I'm not yeah. sure how you perceive that. No, no. So, so, so this is great, right? Um, again, nobody's monolithic. And then how do you have these? Because you're right. If, if, listen, me yelling at somebody and, and just yelling them out and cursing them out and everything like that has never been an effective way to get across anything. Right. Right. If I'll say this, right? I'm from New York. I hear so much all the time, especially politicians. They say, oh, we don't want somebody from New York, blah, 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 blah. And almost to say New York has become synonymous now with uh, you're, you're not a real American. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if you're from New York or L.A. or San Francisco or, uh, uh, or, or, or Boston or something, you're, you're not, you know, you know, unless you're an Irish Catholic from Boston. And then, you know, then to yeah. some people you are an American, but then to the others, you know, whatever. Right. But. <clears throat> In the same way that I, I just, I, I really, really hate that. It's like, why, why am I any less American? Cause I didn't grow up on a farm. Like, what does that have to yeah. do with being a good human being? What be, Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I don't have a Ford 350. So I'm less American. Yeah. I don't get it. You know, by the same token though, what I don't want to do is just negate like if you did grow up on a farm, it's like, oh, you're just a farm. Like, no, no, no you're yeah. not just a farm person. Right. You're living a real motherfucking life and your experiences are valid as hell. And I should be able to hear them. I yep. should be able to, as a human being, try to relate to you. 
that is a big problem in this thing because, you know, and I don't know, and, you know, I think social media and a lot of it has a lot to do with it. The world has become convenience, convenience, fast, 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 yep. fast, fast. I, I need agree. to label as quickly as possibly as I can. Yeah. And, and now, and now uh, I love this. I love this conversation, man. Cause now I'm getting at something that I really truly believe. Again, this is one person's opinion. I don't right. think I'm alone though. I don't think I'm alone. And I, and I'm not saying, and I fully put it out there that I, I absolutely, as I become more educated or whatever, or as things get presented to me, I'm a, I'm a very, you know, thirsty for knowledge kind of guy. So I'll be the first person to admit that in my life, early on was i ignorant of like so many things yeah absolutely have yeah. i evolved since then and have you know really expanded yeah. uh, uh a lot of things in my thinking absolutely so i'm not saying that i know the, the the last word on anything and this is the end all and be all but i truly 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 believe this as corny as it sounds and i don't think I, I mean this in the way that most politicians, when they say this, when they say it, they mean one thing. They, they, they want to sound a certain way, but I yeah. think they mean another thing. Yes, when it comes to real big shit, I'm not going to deny that there are differences. If someone truly believes that abortion means, and this is serious shit, mm -hmm. that abortion is like murder, I absolutely, absolutely 1 million percent disagree with that. Mm. I, I disagree with that. I do not agree with that. And that is a very, very strong disagreement. And I can understand yeah. how it would be very hard for people who disagree on that thing to get along if it means that much to them. So I leave that out there. I understand that there is a difference in thought about, about what police reform could look like, right? right. I understand that there is an equally passionate, aggressive, opposing view to the one that I have. But I feel like, and I'm talking about the people who have power, okay? Mm. And now I'm getting super, super macro uh, in, in what I'm saying, right? So I'm sorry if I sound general, but, but the people who are in power the, the institutions that are in power. And I don't think it's conspiracy theory to think this. I think it's human nature. What does power want to do? It wants to hold on to it and expand it. And I think making divisions in society and tribalism is the most effective tool to staying in power. We who have all this wealth, we who have the power to write legislation, to write laws, enact them to benefit ourselves, will always be able to do it so long as if we can get the masses to fight about a bathroom, to fight about, you know, a phrase, defund the police or Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. If we can get them to fight about it, don't get me wrong. These are important fights to have. I'm not saying they ain't. But then to make it completely about that. And in the meanwhile, the average American will get poorer and poorer and poorer. Their dollar will stretch, you know, thinner and thinner and thinner every fucking year. But they're still going to vote for us anyway, because we have more money so we can put out ads. We, you know, we have name recognition and it doesn't matter if we're on the right or the left, if we're Republican or Democrat, we serve all the same corporate masses in the end. So I know that's like a, I think there is a middle ground. There really is so many things that we have more in common as working class, middle class, or even kind of slightly better than middle class, but it's going to look a hundred thousand dollars a year in salary today. Ain't nothing. If you made a hundred thousand bucks in 1975, man, holy shit, you were doing yeah. fucking amazing, right? Yeah. Today, if you have a family of four on a hundred and thousand, hundred thousand dollars, like, yes, if you live frugally, if you make smart decisions, if you really map things out and you know, you really budget well and stuff like that. Yeah. You can do it and stuff and everything like that. But look, it ain't that fucking easy for them. Now, now what if you're the family that makes 50 grand? Holy shit. Yeah. Now what if you're the family that makes 36 grand a year? 
Yeah. Where it's becoming much more of that, the difference between the haves and the have nots, the difference between who has the voice, you know, who has the ability to influence and who doesn't. I mean, it's getting really, really lopsided. And I think it has been for the longest time. Yeah. And even, I think it's always been, I think it's more exposed now with the way things have changed with the climate of, of, you know, social, like the internet and social media, I think really expose a lot of the flaws, but yet the, the system is still exactly the same. So it's. Yeah. So, but the, the power brokers, I think the people who have the most reach are still like, yes, I will say this. I have a lot of faith and hope in the younger generations that are like kids today are fucking yes. There's more misinformation maybe than ever was too. Yeah, I agree. And at the same time though, my God, I look at my nieces and my nephews, dude, and holy crap, they they holy Lord Almighty, these kids are like a billion gajillion times smarter than than I ever was, and mm -hmm. and I have a lot of faith and hope in them. And their main source of information may not necessarily come from CNN, MSNBC, God forbid, you know, Fox News or, or any of those traditional things. Because at the end of the day, I do think a lot of what the traditional mainstream uh, news media does, I think they really do help promote the culture war identity politics side of things that keep us in tribes and yeah. and and they do and they don't focus on because they're owned they're yeah. owned by yeah. big massive multinational corporations why is it like i would love if on every news network whether they consider themselves right leaning or left leaning say look for the last 40 years, these companies have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Every tax break that has been uh, um, proposed, they got. Uh, the number of billionaires have exploded. One guy in one company makes a salary that the bottom 20,000 people combined does not make. Yet, we're still saying that if you raise the salary of the bottom line employee, this company is going to go out of business. That's the narrative that's still being told today. Yeah. How right. on God's green earth could that possibly? And I'm talking about, and now that is not about politics. You could be the most right wing dude on the planet. If you're working in a factory for fucking $11 an hour, you're working for $11 an hour. Yeah. You could be the most left, 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 you know, person out there. If you're working in a factory for 11 bucks an hour, you're working for a factory in 11 bucks an hour. Yeah. Last time I checked, that's probably hitting you hardest on a daily basis more than anything else, right? Right. right. But yeah. that's not what we ever talk about. We talk about bathrooms. And well, you know, you know, and crap like that. Right. I swear to God, you know, you know, uh, we want to talk. I mean, it's, 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 it's nonsense. Man. I know what you're getting at here. And here's the thing I, that I also want to point out, too. Um, it's like, uh, you know, you, you talked about news media, Fox News and things like that, and how it's really about sound bites. And, and, and here's and this is my perception about it here. Yeah, this is where I, I really do believe it's a lack of education about communicating and not only just communicating, but it really is about taking the time to investigate, to really look at the information, really dig in deep. Very few people do do that. Like, you know, we have this conversation now. right now. We've been going for almost two hours, you know, as of this recall well, from the previous recording to now. And, you know, as we're it, we started the conversation about a movie and then it trails off into this here. But as we're talking, you know, we're learning a lot about ourselves and our, we're learning about each other. I meant to say where we're finding out, you know, you know, some of the things you're saying, you know, do I agree with it? And then I'm hearing you explain, I'm like, and I might have a perception. Like, I don't know if I, I understand where he's going with it, but you're, as you're getting more into it without me having to interrupt you and say, hold on one second, wait a minute. You know, I, if I had done that, this conversation probably would have ended a long time ago, but right. having the time to really listen and you know hear the person out. And that goes the same for, if you, if you read a headline where it says, uh, you know, Obama, you know, if, if let's use Obama as an example, Obama, uh, turns out to be not an American. That's the soundbite. Okay, yeah. and then that's, that's face value right there. They accept right. that now because the yeah. narrative had already been created. 
right. rather than hold on one second. You're saying he's a, so how was he even voted in in the first place if he was on because you have to fill out applications and you have to have support from all these people. There's a lot of layers that has to be looked into before you can even get to that point. Yeah. So for people to simply believe that oh wait we always knew all along he wasn't American, that's the lack of education where they weren't taught to look into the work and look into all that stuff to investigate, to do their, 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 the due diligence of verifying that information. It's all about sound bites because I'm too busy and I need to move on to a, a, B and C. That's the culture that we have right now here in this country. I'm not saying it's not like that anywhere else, but in, at least in this country, because from my own experience, but, but, right. it's all, it's like that. Yeah. So I, I think, I think, you know, and, and what we've gotten on to and stuff, and again, like who the fuck am I, but I really believe this because I just think it's, it's just factually true. Um, are we a society that's ruled by an emperor or a king? No, no. Do we live in a dictatorship? No. No. Do we live though in a kind of, uh, are there people who make a lot of decisions of what we eat, what we consume, what we view and everything like that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I think though, we are a country that is run by corporations. So we're mm -hmm. not necessarily, and that's, and, and their ability to influence politics and politicians, you know, we like, and let's break this down to like something that, that anybody can understand. Like, yo, What's the decision that goes into uh, what street gets fixed? You got a fucking street that's got like a million potholes, like literally driving on it. You know, you're just putting your car through hell, right? And everything mm -hmm. like that. Why is it that that one street over there that barely has a crack in it gets fixed every time Johnny on the spot, whenever the hell? And there's this block over here. It's got 42 potholes and cracks in it and stuff like that, like almost man-sized sinkhole shit, and you can't get it fixed, Right. right. Who decides that? A local level or whatever, but you know, so let's break it down to locally. Who decides that, right? Right. Some city politician, local politician somewhere has decided what does and what doesn't. Right. Now, who influences that decision? You know, uh, 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 this is this is this is uh, public information, right? Right. So, so like you said, you know, if one took the time to just take an hour out of the day even, right? And you look up who finances almost all the politicians in the United States yeah. Senate and, and in the Congress and everything like that. These big, 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 big multinational companies and then the super PACs that they're allowed to contribute unlimited money to, they give equal amounts to both sides of the aisle. You yeah. know, this idea that we really live, <laughs> yeah. we don't live in as an fractured as a society as yeah. we think we do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, both sides of the aisle want rich people to get richer as possible, to have all the power to have. Why isn't it that that a layman cannot understand tax law? Because it's insane. Yeah. If, if you make if, if you make fifty thousand dollars a year, your taxes are really straightforward. You can do a ten forty EZ. You know, you know, you can't uh, write off almost anything. You get the standard deduction, yeah. and then you send that shit yeah. in, and you go right. Right. But how is it that there are literally, literally, there are millionaires who, who are, you know. And this is just fact. This is this is out there, folks. This is facts. And when people talk about the stock market, like like for example, that's another thing. The stock market is always talked about as a reflection of the broader economy. That's not just not true. Mm -hmm. The stock market could be doing total shit, and businesses could still be doing well. The stock market is 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 just a big gambling casino, which the overwhelming majority of the people who are making money in the stock market. Are, 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 are wealthy people. Uh, a large chunk of the vast American public do not have 401ks. So even when people talk about their retirements and 401ks are invested in some mutual fund in the stock, blah, 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 whatever, mm -hmm. it ain't a whole lot and it ain't that many people. There's way more people that don't have a penny invested in the stock market. Yeah, sure. So, so when we talk about that even, right? So, but then we constantly write laws that help the stock. Okay, here's, here's what I'm getting at. Here's what I'm getting at. 
vast majority of senators and congressmen are millionaires, right? That's just mm -hmm. fact. Yep. Overwhelming majority of them. Mm -hmm. Overwhelming majority of the American public are not millionaires. Overwhelming majority of the public can't claim kinds of deductions and things like that, that all of a sudden, even though they made millions of dollars, they get a refund. How is that possible? We can't do that. How can you have a business that makes billions and billions of dollars and you pay 0% in income tax? Right, left, or center, whatever the hell you consider yourself politically, does that ring of fairness to you? Right. Does that yeah. ring of just... No, no, and here's another thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think my brother, I'm not sure, but I think my brother makes right around the limit at where... You know, so I forget what the number, it changes a little bit every year, right? But basically somewhere in the hundred and $115,000 to $125,000 range or something like that, right? It might, it might be a little bit higher than that now, right? Because it does change every year a little bit, right? Um, you know, up to that income, right? We have an automatic around 12% that get taken out for Social Security and Medicare, right? Right. right. But it's a cap. So... So this is what I'm saying, right? All of us buy into, all of us buy into the experiment, this experiment of democracy. Okay, we pay our income taxes so that we can have uh, social, these services that provide for us all, right? We have a fire department, a police department, and, and, and public schools and libraries, and, and we have parks and and, and, and roads and bridges get fixed because we all pay into this system that is supposed to benefit all of us, right? We don't right. parse out, well, this person only gave this much and this person only, so this person shouldn't get a street, right? right. That's not how it should be, right? right. So right. then my question is this, right? And this is, this is really, really, I think, encapsulates what I'm talking about here. A family of four that's making $100,000 a year, they got to watch every penny that they make, they got a decent income, but they got to watch every penny that they make and, and live within a budget, live within their means. Okay. They ain't the easiest existence. But a full percentage of their entire income is going to be taxed for Social Security and Medicare. Why do we think it makes sense in this society that literally someone who makes 1,000 times that family of four pays maybe a few hundred bucks more into Social Security and Medicare. But that's true. Mm. If you have a $5 million salary, only the first $115,000, $120,000 of that is of that, of that is taxable towards your contribution to Social Security and Medicare. So if you're in this business and you're lucky enough to be one of these mega stars and stuff, and you got paid that 15 to $20 million for one movie, only your first hundred something thousand bucks, does that get taken for social security and Medicare? Now, this is what I'm saying. If American income is American income and income is income and it's a democracy and, and, and fair is fair. Why is it, that a full 12% of my income should be taken, but not a full 12% of your income should be taken. Right. That's, and, and in that sense, and, and I see it in the business all the time, right? The people who can most afford certain things are the people who get the most free things. The people who can least afford and can use the help almost never get it. I think that's not that's not something that is an indictment of, of the industry that I'm in. That is symptomatic of American society as a whole. The person who, who has the least, we really like telling them they're fucking leeches. They suck. Mm -hmm. If you're on Medicaid, you're a piece of shit. You know, if you can't do it and pull yourself by your bootstraps, you suck, you suck, you suck. And that's regardless if you're on in, in your right, left or anything, regardless of race, right? Right. You weren't good enough. You didn't try hard enough, which is why you're struggling. So maybe you deserve dirty, rotten water for your, you know, because you suck. You're not good enough to live in a better neighborhood with clean drinking water. 
we've gotten accustomed to that, I think. We, as a, as a society, have accepted that for far too long, right? And that's why I have faith in younger generations that are so much smarter than I ever was and everything that they're recognizing this bullshit and they're calling it out. But that is the society and the system that we're living in. So, you know, I really, really pose that out there. Is it really fair that somebody makes $330 million in one single year that only the first hundred something thousand dollars of their income, that only 12% of that or whatever goes towards the social security and Medicare benefit? We could, if it was really, really fair on that alone, what can a guy who's got $5 billion, what can't he buy if he had like, let's say $4.2 billion that he needed the full five, which is why he needed all these tax breaks and everything, all yes, these loopholes, okay. you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if that guy paid his fair share into our social safety nets, like, and that's the other thing people talk about is like giving people free stuff. No, it's not. We're paying for it. We're paying for it with our income and our hard earned work, our fucking tax dollars all the fucking time, every goddamn day. And this is what I'm saying. Ask yourself, regardless of whether political spectrum you're on, do you think it's fair that every effing time some gigantic company that makes billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars when they do things that are irresponsible and foolish and make bad business decisions, they get bailed out by us nearly every time. They will take our taxpayer dollars and bail them out. But if you make $42,000 a year, let's say you made a bad business decision this, this year, are you gonna get a check to get bailed out by the government? No, you're not. So why does Boeing, hmm. why does Chase? Yeah. Why, do, why don't we ask these questions and why don't we ask them every single effing day? Why don't we, you know, ask ourselves, you know, what is the common denominator of why life is getting so, is it really about a few thousand migrants at the Southern border? Is it really about some guy who is literally penniless and almost shirtless, literally a uh, 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 desperate as hell that wherever he's coming from was so much worse that he's trying to come here to make a better life. Is, is that guy the drain? Is that guy the reason why you're only making 11 bucks an hour? I see where you're going with this. You know guy. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you I'm, know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm understanding now, yeah. But it's, but it's easy when the entire... Uh, 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 news media is complicit in this to say, well, yeah, no, that is 50-50. When people make this argument, that is 50-50 to this argument. And I think that's, that's bull crap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So where there is a much larger middle, see, but, but political middle is bullshit. Political middle, if you're a politician that says you're a centrist, that means you're, you're, you're pro-millionaire and billionaire. That's, 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 when I hear a politician say that they're a centrist, that's what I hear. Mm. But the media will present it as, oh, no, 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 they're fair and balanced, moderate people. That's bullshit. Yeah. Because what's called extreme um, in the news media is actually the overwhelming vast majority of the public want to expand Medicare. The overwhelming vast majority of the public is, is A-OK -okay for raising the minimum wage. The overwhelming vast majority of the public is OK with raising taxes on the richest companies and billionaires in America. But that's not how it gets presented. Instead, what gets presented is we're so divided because no, in actuality, uh, if you're on the right wing, you only supposed to support these politicians. Right. If you're on the left, Right. You're only supposed to support these politicians. And the reason why you support them is because you're for gay marriage and you're against gay marriage. And don't get me wrong. That is an important issue. Yes. Because that's a fundamental human rights issue. Right. But, but if we can on that one issue, whatever it is, 
find one issue that you can get somebody to disagree with you on, and then you've got them for life. If we can trick them that way. We can keep them uh, uh, in love with being poor because they'll just always blame the other guys and never look at right. what, what the vast yeah. majority of the people who are the power brokers are doing on a daily basis. To Manipulation. Put, to step yeah. on our necks. To yeah. step on our necks. Yo, man, working class, what does that fucking mean anymore? Yeah. We are, all of us are struggling, man. When the vast majority of American families cannot afford a $1,000 emergency, right? That, that would actually like, oh my God, okay, look, I got to cut corners here. I got, it's hard, right? If right. somebody said to you right now, you know, you just got to come up with an extra thousand dollars for this, right? It actually makes life harder for so many people, so many families living paycheck to paycheck. Why is it that pro corporate welfare to give $50 billion to a single company is good business. And that's the way that that's talked about. But to so, make it easier for a kid to go to college, to make it easier for a family to have health insurance, to guarantee that a family does not have starvation wages, that is called entitlement, welfare. You know, when you're talking about the people who have the least amount of money and the least amount of power. But when money is given to those who are in the highest seats of power and the most wealth, that's considered investment and good business. And I know I'm really going off here, but I think that's where, that's where we all get bamboozled. That's where we all get gaslit because in the middle, yes, people that disagree about very serious things actually agree on a whole lot of other things and those things get totally uh, 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 swept under the rug because the power brokers don't want us to see that that's true man you're working yeah. class if you're working class right regardless of whether you're right or left if you're poor in this country you're poor right if you're making fucking 13 bucks an hour 14 bucks an hour like, i don't care where you live in america anymore who the fucking can can feed a family on that you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, and but but the narrative is if you don't make a lot, but if our government tries to work for you, then that's some some crazy radical yeah. bullshit. You know, late you're, you're you're entitling lazy people or something. It's insane. It's insane. Well, it's insane. here's here's another thing too that um that I'm also picking up from there. Uh, and I've kind of felt the same way about it too but the thing is is that I've, I've noticed if you if you look at the trajectory how things are, are working here where there's you, you mentioned before about how you know bigger corporations getting pretty much the better end of the deal where everyone else kind of gets the you know whatever's left over if, if if there's anything at all to to get from that but at the end of the day i also come to realize at least for myself and this is my perception that you know all these talking points in a lot of ways are really just distractions about what the bigger issue really is you know hey we're it's like uh, I, I liken it to, um, you know, we're uh, we're we're I I, I, I kind of think of it as someone who is trying to, you know, create a uh, put a building up, and they're going to use the building as a way to help the community. But in reality, it's just them to be able to do it for other purposes, and it's just the front. And then they're creating the distraction. Like, you know, there's all these problems over here, and. and we have all these people that are causing, you know, that are fighting back and forth. And then they have yeah. delegates who come in and play to kind of just coordinate that and then try to either push for that even further or create a, you know, there's, there's a lot of different layers I pick up on that. And it's, yeah. and it, it can be, it can be looked at as a conspiracy to some people. I don't necessarily think it is a conspiracy. I really think if you just look at the consistency throughout, you know, these, these, uh, these reportings, it's it's a distraction because again they're talking points in my mind like they're talking about you go to Fox News or even CNN or whatever other news uh, uh, news outlet they have 15 minutes to talk about it in a really important subject matter and they're trying to cram in as much information but it's it's just a shouting match but they just... also present and frame things from a particular perspective true so and I say so it comes from they're not really really giving this kind of both sides type right. of thing it's, it's, Unless the side is pro corporate, it's right. Always right. But again, though, but the, the thing I'm getting at it though is that when you, if you really pull back the veil, you're you're going to come to realize that the very same people, because there's, there's, I'm sure you've heard a story before too, where uh, I forgot what guest it was that was on the O'Reilly Factor. Um, I forgot who's what his name was was, but 
he was on the show and they were talking arguing about a, a particular topic and riley was just railing on the guy and they were just going back and forth and then once the segment was done the guy walked off set and riley walked off set and then he had shared a story that then afterwards i was uh i was gathering something to drink or eat i think it was and then o'reilly came up and said hey man just so you know i just did that for the camera yeah. and you're like holy fuck so you mean to tell me that all that shit that you just said and all that you know, that railing and, and making it yeah. so difficult for me to communicate and, and articulate my thoughts going back and forth with the limited time that we have, it was just all for a show. That was pretty much the yeah. whole story in a nutshell. And then when you, if you look at O'Reilly now, even though people, he, he definitely is a lot of a, a controversial figure, if you look at some of his stuff he's done lately, it's nowhere near as impactful. Why? Because his narrative has changed a little bit where he's, his, his tune has kind of changed. So you wonder was he always believing in those in that rhetoric that he's spewing out or was it all just because the, the, the company that he was working for saying, Hey, we got to do this here and we'll, we'll pay you X amount of money. Well, the bottom line it was that it was, it made money. Right. It's, it's exactly the point though. Right. It's, it's exactly the point. So it's like, you don't, as I'm saying, social media has changed a lot where you have interviews that are coming out where you can hear these stories and it's accessible but when you hear these stories, you realize, holy shit, it's not what you think it is. It really isn't. You've had, yeah. you hear plenty of stories of politicians who are on, on these debate uh, panels and they're ramming each other. And then behind the closed doors, like, hey, listen, man, you made a really good point about this and that. But yeah, well, let's just talk it over lunch. And they're on the opposing figures and they're, 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 they converse with one another. And they're used to doing that because that, you know, we just got to do this for the camera. Yeah. So it's, it's like I said before, the, the, the facade is, has, is, is is has been lifted but people don't take the time to look into that to realize right. holy shit there's a bigger this is all but, but that but that's where and i know i'm like you know because i sound like i'm just like fucking railing myself no 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 i don't this believe that where, at all. this is where i get um very optimistic and hopeful about younger people because i think they are they are paying attention they're saying enough is enough they're they're literally actually looking at what's happening it's like whoa, whoa, whoa hold on a second it's not easier for us. It's harder for us more than ever. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it, you, you say to get college educated, but when I graduate, I'm graduating with uh, what, what amounts to a mortgage. I'm starting off in life as a 22 year old with a freaking $160,000 yeah. uh, student loan debt. Things are more expensive than they ever were. Uh, uh, yeah. Apartments are more expensive than they ever were. Uh, there are more billionaires than there ever were. Yep. Something's not quite right. You keep telling me the economy is great because there are more billionaires, but the overwhelming vast majority of us are dollar stretches less and less and less further than it ever did before. Right. Yeah. Wages have been stagnant for 40 years, you know, and, and, and this is where I'm getting at. And, and, and to me, I'm, look, look, we're, I don't have fucking answers to anything. I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to talk about some utopian world here or something like mm -hmm. that. But if we are an experiment in democracy, if we are the thing that says being an American is not something that, 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 that is a genetic thing. Right. It is an experiment in democracy of people from all over the world, literally. Yeah. From wherever you come from, whatever religion you practice, whatever culture you come from, that here in America, we're going to do this experiment where we're going to do self-governance, where we're going to try to live by the principles of equality for all, justice and equity for all, accountability for all. If that's the goal, then how can we have how can we have institutions of power that are not powered by people? Because they're not. And and you know, honest to God, we already know the answer to this question. Could the CEO of Chase Bank call up a senator on his cell phone right now today? Yes, he can. Could you or I? And you're telling me that that guy doesn't have a greater influence than we do. Yeah. So then is that a democracy? But we say the ideal of this country says that, that we are a democracy and therefore that the poorest person's voice counts as much as the richest person's voice. 
that's not true. No, I don't agree with that at all. So no. I don't think, I don't think, so for me, even though somebody might disagree with me on my stance on one particular thing, and it's mm -hmm. an important disagreement to them, right? Mm -hmm. Just because you disagree with me on very, very big issues, mm -hmm. I'm not going to then say, well, you're so much my fucking enemy. I want to see you suffer. Right. I don't think you should have higher wages. I don't think you should have access to good health care. I don't think you should have access to good drinking water because I think you're a lousy piece of shit and you should right. go fuck yourself. Right. I'm not going to do that. I'm yeah. not going to do that. And I think somewhere, uh, uh, um, somewhere in that, the ability to be able to disagree on very difficult things, but on the things that you agree on, to still agree on them and embrace those uh, uh, agreements and to fight right, right together on those, it's, it's maybe the hardest thing, but it's so necessary. Yeah, well, because, I, I because think the that... boat's a lot bigger than we think it is. The boat is a whole lot when it comes right. down to, holy fuck, I got to choose between buying diapers or buying, you know, fucking baby formula. What the fuck am I gonna do? Right. That that doesn't give a damn about what your goddamn uh, politics, politics are. are. Right. Well, and that's the thing though, because uh, the, that's the problem. Because I, 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 I think of I touch upon it on more than one occasion where it's just the the the, the inability to communicate things properly. Because there's a lot of people who jump to these conclusions of like because you support this, you are evil. I mean, even if it's the most like sensitive topic, let's say for example, like a transgender issue where there are a lot of people who have opinions about that, where, you know, the, you brought about the issues about the bathrooms and whatnot. Right. I understand that argument. And I, I, you know, from my perspective, I can give, you know, the reasons uh, w why I think the way I do. But even if you try to present that to someone else and say, right. so you mean to tell me if you say, if you, if you believe, if you think like that, that means right. you're evil. And that would automatically, you know, cancel you because now you're, because the person never took the time to listen to them. And that's, right. that to me is yeah. the biggest important thing. Yeah, that okay. So do. you brought up something that's really important. I want to make an, you know, for me, I want mm. to make an important distinction. All right. Um, if, if we're not allowed to evolve anymore, then right. Jesus Christ, right. fucking cancel. If you're telling me that something that I did when I was 14 years old, let me tell you something, man. It was a bad time in my life and I made a lot of poor choices. I made a lot of mistakes and I own them today. And, 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 but if I'm, if, if I can never evolve past that, then, then, right. you know, then, then there's yeah. nothing. So I disagree with that. And I understand when people talk about the cancel culture, but I think too many things also get lumped into cancel culture. That is not that. Hmm. if someone is literally just saying you know no what you're doing is wrong I disagree with you and what you're doing is wrong I full heartedly disagree with your take on this right that's not canceling somebody but just right. because it's done in a public forum now that person thinks that they're being canceled no that's that's standing by your values. To say that somebody who said something when they were 19 should now be fired from the job is at 35, right? right? That to me is more of an example of, okay, so unless you walk this earth like you were Jesus or some shit, right. then <laughs> all of us should be fucking canceled. Right. But if you're saying to somebody, if you're saying to somebody, if somebody uses the F word and I'm not talking about fuck, I'm talking about the other F word mm -hmm. and say, well, it's American. I should be able to use that word. And right. somebody says, no, I don't want somebody like you as the face of my business interacting with customers who may be gay or not. No, you should not work for me. That's not being canceled. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. think I think there is a distinction. Yeah, I agree with um, you too. That if yeah. somebody goes out there, and here's the thing, and here's all I'm gonna say, and and you know whatever about that particular thing. I remember what it's like to feel like a second class citizen and being in acceptance of it. Mm -hmm. I remember what it's like to try to shrink and be less than my full self to accommodate others. I remember what it's like, and it can still happen to me today, for my own safety to behave in a certain way that is as the least 
threatening to anybody in any way or challenging as possible. Right. Today, I don't accept that. Today, I think that's disgusting. And I think it's terrible. Did some of that come from myself? Maybe. But did a lot of that come from the environment and the situations that I was in? I should have never been in acceptance of those things. And I don't think I should have ever been placed in a situation where just because of, of, of the shape of my eyes, that my very safety or my ability to buy a, 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 a pastry could come into question. And because of that, because of that, I have a very hard time, very hard time doing something enacting something or supporting something that really lessens the human rights of an individual. When someone says it is my right to call someone the N word, to say the F word, to call people chinks, books, spicks, this, that, yeah. and I think they should all burn in hell. And if it's brown, flush it down. To me, that is not the same free speech argument or a civil rights argument as it is for someone to say, no, this is who I am. This is what I identify as. I'm not trying to hurt other people. I just want to be able to breathe, to be allowed to be me. I think that's a very different argument than the other thing. Right. Because the other thing can, inst like, I know it's tough for some people. Yeah. But, but really ask yourself in a very general sense. I'm not talking about outliers. I'm not talking about like anybody could be out of their minds. Anybody could be discriminatory. Anybody can have a bad day and be a bad guy in any particular moment, right? Right. But in general, do we honestly believe that somebody who was born uh, with one anatomy and later in life identifies as this gender, right? And they just want to feel more normal or for whatever reason, they just want to use this, do, this bathroom, say. Do we honestly, honestly believe that they are doing that to hurt other people? You and a point, yeah. For me, yeah. for me, my conclusion is, is no, I don't think they're doing that to try to make anyone's life miserable. Just like me walking into a pastry shop, my only your goal in walking into that pastry shop when I was four, when I was, you know, 12, 13 years old was to buy a pastry. That's it. It was not to make people feel uncomfortable. It was to not uh, 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 infuriate people who like I cannot believe this thing just walked into my store. That's it, and 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 so for me, uh, you know, that's how I kind of see that issue as, you know, if you're afraid that somebody of another gender is going to walk into your bathroom and everything, like they could do that now. Yeah. So when I hear the arguments of like you know you want somebody like when you're daughter's in there and you want some guy to walk in there and maybe he could assault her and it's like honest to god if there was some really disgusting piece of shit that would do that to your daughter he could do that right now because they ain't no lock they ain't no dna lock you know that you go like this with your thumb that it gives you entry into a public restroom at a mall or wherever right right come on right. man you know it's so for me where i come from in those things is when someone is 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 literally say hey man i want the same rights that are available to 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 everyone else and i don't want to be qualified and labeled as well, well, well these rights are for these people but not for you right um i i have a hard time doing that and 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 those can be, be with be with people that i disagree with as well yeah. i think we should we should all have those rights but but it's, you know, so that's where I fall on that. I think, I think, yeah, I, the, it, it's my sense of what I believe is fair. Just like it is fair. Look, 
it is fair, right? Because it is the law. It is, it is a constitutionally protected right for people to bear arms, right? right. And there's a lot of people who have fucking problems with that. A yeah. lot. Yeah. And, 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 and my God, understandably so and everything. And yet on the same side, you know, you can present an argument where a single mom with her three kids at home was able to defend herself and everything from an intruder, right? Because they had a firearm at home and everything right. like that. So one could always find these examples of where, and so I'm not going to be that guy who goes, oh, no, 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 no. If you're a gun owner and, and, and you're a pro second amendment person, you're an absolute categorically, you're a piece of shit. You're God awful. You're, you're, you're a terrible human being. I should have nothing to do with you. We have nothing in common and kick rocks not going to do that, not going to do that. Right. And likewise, I don't want that to happen to me. And so therefore, I got a problem with anything that sort of kind of says that to people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think, um, you know, what you, 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 you brought about that point about the, the whole bathroom situation. Like, I remember I saw a video, this is like, I think a few years ago, it was a YouTube video, in fact, where it was a young woman who was really pretty, Caucasian and you've seen it before too when you go to an event or uh, especially in a, any sort of event concert whatever the case may be who has the longest line mostly the women right and yeah. the male is then a little bit lesser so yeah. the line in the in the women's bathroom was astronomically long and the woman's like I got to use the bathroom really 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 bad went up to the male line, to the men's bathroom and said can I just cut in line because I got to pee I just I'm going to go in and yeah. out yeah. yeah sure no problem and then they were inside the bathroom following her and she's like, thanks, guys. And, you know, it was very beautiful and walked right out. There was not a single fuss about that. Now, if you think about that and you put a let's say let's say it's a gay man, very flamboyant. Hey, fellas, you know, at a sporting event and especially at that time, maybe it wouldn't have been well received as that pretty white girl walking into the bathroom. So there's a, and then not only just that, but you think about the transgender issue as well, too. There's a lot of different things about, like I, like I said before, it's perception where if it's this, it's OK. If it's that not so much if it's that definitely not so there's yeah. always different standards that are in place for that and i do agree with you to what you're saying i guess um, from my perspective i'm i'm cause, maybe because i'm a parent but i don't think that's the reason why but i'm always cautious about you know if i go to the bathroom and my son's in the bathroom i don't want him to go by himself not because of a transgender person coming in to use right. it could be a man yeah. that may be a pedophile who saw my son and walked in went right after him. And as soon as Absolutely. they saw me walking in, oh, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to use the bathroom now. Dude, so, all the time we see parents walk, walk there. You know, I've seen little girls use men's bathrooms all the time because dad right. took them in. Right. Or, or, or mom takes a, uh, their son into the women's restroom because, right. you know, what? I'm not going to let my fucking kid just walk, you know, whatever right. and everything like that. Right. And we don't have an issue with those things. Right. And, and, and so here's where I stand on all of these things and everything is, is it comes back down to what is the most democratic at its core, right? Because here's the thing, as people, we have likes and dislikes, right? right. That's just no one, no one's perfect and no one's just right. a, an omnipotent fucking anything, right? Right. But, but, but the laws of the constitution, right? Why you try to perfect uh, the perfect union is you don't make it about a, a personal like or dislike. What is actually the most democratic? What is the actually the most equitable, right? Right. Uh, that has to be the compass, right? And, right? and that's why in good conscience, and at least, and I know I'm just one person, but for me in good conscience, I can't, I can't look at that and go, you know, denying this group of people something is actually more equi equitable and fair for the for for the greater whole. I that that nah, man, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't yeah. that doesn't sound right to me. Even even if something, you know what, <laughs> fucking life's hard. There are things that are going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We're all from different walks of life, and we're not right. going to agree on everything. Yeah. But the thing that makes us most equal the thing that makes us most democratic has to be the right way to go you know that's 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 how i and that's why i think 
money needs to get the fuck out of politics. <laughs> I agree too. You know, there's uh, Big money, you know, corporate money and stuff. Right, like I know that. What you're getting at. There's a show. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Uh, it's it was a uh, it was um, a Robert Townsend show called The Parenthood. You ever heard of that show? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I, when I was a kid growing up, I loved that show. Like I watched that show religiously, but because there was Robert Townsend for me was one of those guys that, you know, he approached, I'm not sure how the best way to say, it, but for me, when I look back at it now, he approached social commentary issues, but in a way that I always felt like was not just educational, but very wholesome, relatable, but r- relatable and very realistic in a lot of ways within yeah. the confines of the sitcom, you know, uh, setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's one particular episode. I forgot which one it was, but I, 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 it always stuck with me. And it was about, I think it was his son. I can't remember if it was his youngest one or his oldest one, but he was talking about freedom of speech. And then he said, yes, freedom of speech, but with responsibility. I'll never forget yeah. that line. And I was like, that is one of the most uh, wise things I've ever heard. And that's coming from a television show yeah. that it's, and, and then I agree with you too, that entertainment can be, it can be a fickle thing. It can, it, you know, it's not a way, it's not a place you may want to go to for some people that you want to use to help change the system. Cause I don't think it will, but little things like that, I think, imagine if, you know, someone like myself who saw that, I'm not looking at the show as that's an African-American show. And I've learned from right. this African-American man. No, it was like, no. this is a smart man who says something really smart and it stuck with me. He just happened right. to be black. Exactly. So yeah, you were going to say, but, but Robert, but, 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 to just add to what you're saying, though, though, okay, yeah. there is going to be messaging. Of course. Free goddamn blatant direct messaging by other programs. They're going to tell you that black is the boogeyman. Right. Black is stupid. Or black can only rap or play football. Or black, you don't want them to move into your neighborhood because they lower property values. And right. there's going to be things in the media that actually fucking fight for those ideas. So- Right. You're not, you individually are not looking at it as, oh, I'm looking at this as a good example of a, or a positive uh, example of a, of, 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 of African American in a show and da, 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 da. Right. But what I'm getting at is the societal effect though still is, is that what he's doing is necessary and therefore, you know, for you, you know, um, and important, you know what I'm saying? Right. That, 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 that until one day we get to that place where we really, 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 really do just judge each other by the content of our character. Right. I agree. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 the awareness and the responsibility that has to be taken by those who feel it. Right. right. To counteract the forces that, that, that only, uh, uh, propagate and 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 reinforce literally centuries, right? Of status quo, right? You know that you know it. It just the reality is that that that's what we live with. So right. so you know that that responsibility has to be taken, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure in his own way, he he. I'm sure he did. Right. Well, let me ask you something real quickly um, about yeah. uh, entertainment again, because um, I, I grew up watching uh, like the Wayne's Brothers, for example. Um, I'm a very big yeah. fan of the of the family's work, but and, and I watched the show rather recently. Uh, and at the time, again, I didn't perceive it, at, you know, as as far as like colors concerned. I just looked at it what was funny. When I'm looking at it now, my obviously I have a whole new set of lenses, but when I'm looking at it, I was like, wow, there is a lot of stuff now that they're, they, they did at that sh- on, on that show that will not right. fly today. I mean, yeah. by a long mile. And, you know, and there's a part of me that was conflicted because there are some jokes that they had mentioned uh, in there uh, that talked about Hispanics, Asians that were clearly stereotypical that I laughed at. Right. And I wondered like, is that bad that um that I still think it's funny or is it bad that I think it's funny, and then I understand why they did it. I mean, like I, I was very conflicted because there a lot of the stuff I remember as a kid. I have great memories around that show and enjoying the films that they've done as well too. But I know things have changed for me that I don't look at things the same way as before. So as I'm watching the show, I'm like I'm analyzing it now for what what they're what they've done back then and how how it's looked at now. 
does it hold up well no not necessarily but does our do the jokes still hold up well some do some don't but what yeah. about the 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 racial aspect of it too what's their perception on that so that's why i started looking into doing more research about why they took that route when it comes to their jokes and you know and whether you agree with it or not you know it's it's really up to the individual but i understand their perception i understand their approach but then if you look at their comedies now uh, especially with Marlon, who's done mostly more movies, like uh, was it, what was it, Sex Tuples that he did it for Netflix? It had a variety of different characters that he's different that he's playing, and you have one stereotypical, you know, African American uh, woman, and but there's nothing about him doing that with other cultures. Like no, he's not doing Chinese, he's not doing Hispanics or anything of that sort. He's still within the confines of the stereotypes to some degree within his community. So I'm wondering if a lot of that has changed because how the climate has changed and how he's approaching the comedy now by kind of doing what, what has worked with him before, but on his own. So there's a lot of things that I question. I'm not saying I'm questioning him as a person, but just question about the, the approach that he's taking now when it comes to their com- the comedy. So like it's, I've, I've noticed that trajectory changed a great deal. The comedy's still there, but the approach yeah. to the comedy is slightly different. So I'm not sure how you look at that for yourself. Yeah, no, so so this is great stuff, man. So, well, I'll say bad is this, right? Um, uh-huh. We have to allow for evolution, man. We just do. Right. The nuance has to be out there. And listen, you know, um, there's probably a comedian out there for literally every stripe of American there is. Mm. Right? Right. There are comedians out there that I don't think are funny fucking at all. Right. And then there way. are other Americans who think they're the funniest thing since sliced bread, right? <laughs> um, you know, but the the thing is though, the thing is though, uh, and you know, and I know since we've been talking about it so much, but comedy yeah. to me, especially stand up comedy, a lot of stand up comedy, and and where a lot of you know a lot of a lot of these guys did come from stand up and 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 you know a lot of these guys who did sketch comedy did come from stand up also even though those are not always always uh, true you know but especially stand up comedy almost 100% of stand up comedy whatever your style is and whatever your jokes are you're making fun of people right so there is this implicit you got to go along for the ride that that and that's where it's like Everything and everything, you know, in theory, anything and everything has to be okay because the moment you start signaling out, then people can go like, oh, wait a second, you know, are you actually making a social commentary, political comment? Are you actually trying to marginalize? Are you actually trying to contribute to, you know, let's say an act of violence towards this group or something because you seem to be picking on them or you give, you're giving people you know, the, uh, you're allowing people, um, the space to hate on these guys or these people or something like that. Right. Right. So in theory, they say, but if you make fun of fucking everybody and it's all democratic and you make fun of them in the same way, equally and everything like that, then people understand it's comedy. Right. Right. That's in theory. In practice, it's a lot trickier, right? Yes, I agree. Because people are going to be, people are going to be more sensitive. Like I'm going to be more sensitive to maybe some things than you would and vice versa and right. whatever. And there's no way that you, so as a content creator for those people, they got to be them. They got to do what they do. And if there are people out there who want to fucking cancel and don't want to go to their shows anymore, that's going to happen. And if there are people there that, that, that think it's funny and they're still going to go see them, that's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, you know, but if somebody on their own thinks that their stuff has evolved into something great, go, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Um, But at the end of the day, you know, listen, there are a lot of creatives that I don't agree with just because they're creative or just because they call themselves a filmmaker or they call themselves uh, a, a poet or they call themselves a writer or they, whatever, does it mean that I have to agree with them just because we're in the same you know, we're in the creative field, of course not. Right. So they're going to put their voice out there. And in whatever way that I can, I'm going to put my voice out there. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that's the democracy. And that's tough, though, because 
you know, um, you're, you're never going to be able to, I'm sure I said a lot of things today that, that would make it easier for people to be like, ah, oh, man, I, I'm not with James no more. You know, he's too political for me. Yeah. And or vice like versa. Or the fact that I've, I, that we're having this, because most of the conversations I have on the show, it primarily sticks with like the side of entertainment and among other things too, that we kind of trail off into, but you and I, I, I think you're the very first person I've ever had on the show where I would speak with somebody and we're getting into a political, um, conversation among yeah. several other important topics yeah and but rob that, see what i want to say that too it's like messaging right language right. and everything is so fucking important right because right, like right. for me you know and i know i'm talking i know i've said some things that you know do very much sound like political soapbox stuff right, right and everything right. like that but what does that word really mean right what i'm right. talking about you know is say oh stop being political it's like yeah, 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 yeah. okay yeah. i hear you but what what am i getting try to hear what i'm saying Right. I'm talking about, I'm trying to talk about what I think is human, what I think is decent, what I think it's fair, what I think all of us deserve. Right. Regardless of where we come from, regardless of whatever our political, religious right. stances are, you know, there is a common ground that all, all of us do de deserve clean fucking water to drink. Right. I don't believe it's, it's right that in the richest society in the history of the world that we have so many people, I think it's sad. I think it's heartbreaking. I think we have a shared responsibility as people because we don't live in a vacuum. People have been there for us. I didn't get to where I got to, you know, just because I'm so fucking awesome or whatever. No, yeah. people have been there for me. Uh, I, I have a responsibility to my fellow man. Uh, uh, and if that ends up sounding like politics, then I'm sorry, then that's the word or the label that we're using. But for me, it's what I just really feel is, 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 is right or wrong. And whatever, in whatever way that we do, whether you're a construction worker, you're a teacher at a school, you're a bus driver, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a freaking Fortune 500 CEO, is there a way that we can do things that makes society better for all of us. Does it really make society better for all of us to have this many homeless people? I understand you don't was like, well, no, I worked hard for what I got. I got my home or whatever and everything. Mm -hmm. Why should just they get free stuff? Yeah, 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 I, okay. But to know that there are more empty apartment units in Los Angeles and New York than there are homeless people to know that we waste more food in the restaurant and catering industries mm -hmm. in this country 100%. every yep. day. Yep. We have enough food in this country to feed every American, rich yep. or poor, three yep. meals a day. That we have tens of thousands of American children going hungry every night. Like, are you okay with that? Like, does that make us a stronger society? Does that make us a stronger union. Are you really okay with that? Do you really want to get into what they deserve and what they don't deserve? Right. For a person who's on the waiting list of a, of a shelter, do you think that in this society, that's a fair and equitable way uh, 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 to approach things? That's where I'm coming from. And if it sounds like politics, man, then, you know, I don't know what to say about that, you know? Because yeah. I get it. Some people do just say some things to score some points with, to gain yeah. favor of this. But that's not, well, like what we're talking about here is just basic, you know, human decency. And I know it's gone so far away from what the original questions were about. No, but, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But in a weird way, it's all connected. I don't think anything is disconnected from each other. Right? Yeah. The closer. Let's bring it back to acting for a second. All right. Go on. The more that I'm relatable to anybody, to anybody, don't give a damn what gender, what, 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 what race, what religion, when you see me as a human being though, and that's why I fight for that, I fight for that in what I do. The more you see him as a human being, then you're gonna, then maybe, just maybe, you're more apt to have a conversation with me. And if you're more apt to have a conversation with me, I'm more apt to have a conversation with you. 
And if we're more apt to have a conversation with each other, then divisions, I think, become not as glaring as they were. And maybe, just maybe, right? The, 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 the biggest things that can happen in society literally start with, with that simple little thing, communication, that little thing that before we needed the convenience of knowing something and labeling it like right away when people would literally just talk and they talk about this in terms of our craft, in terms of our profession, yeah. that before it was a Hollywood industry, right? That right. The, before there was a writing system, people verbalized and they found ways to communicate. And it was peep, there were people in the earliest societies that would pass down stories or pass down and moral stories, right? Stories weren't just like for entertainment. They're about teaching lessons. Like these people went out in the woods and they did this a certain way. And then they, and, and they failed and failed and failed until they did this this way. And so now I'm going to tell you about it and I'm going to tell you. And, 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 and that's how storytelling began, right? Right. Right. Storytelling was a necessity, not a luxury, right? Right. Right. So you know, it sounds corny as fuck. I know. I know, you're, right? I know you're saying. Yeah, I but agree with you, though. Tradition, the tradition of what we do. Right. Is literally. The most, you know, storytelling that was absolutely necessary for civilizations to evolve and to grow and to prosper before we got more sophisticated enough to be able to do other things. Right. It was the word of mouth storytelling so so that goes directly as to why what's the story that i'm telling and why 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 going back to what i earlier said stella atlas said that anything worth its salt in this and i'm paraphrasing she, you know she didn't use that phrase probably but anything that's worth doing anything that's worth getting up on stage and doing is by nature political because you are fighting for something you know, you, you, you wrote this. Why did you write this? You, you want to play this part. Why? Is it just commerce? Is it just you want some kind of recognition? You want your 15 minutes? Is, or, or are you most motivated by or when, when, you know, like the first time you ever picked up a script or the first time that you ever read a play before you even knew you wanted to be an actor, right? And, and there was just something about it, like, holy shit, right? You, mm -hmm. It was just like, because it was this awesome, awesome. Well, why was it an awesome monologue? Why was it an awesome scene? Why was it an awesome play? Was it because it was a vehicle to financial success? Or was it because it spoke to some part of your humanity, right? Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's, that's what we, uh, or I shouldn't speak for anybody else, but that's what I as a creative person have to have to always uh, first and foremost engage in every, even if I know I'm in a silly, you know, fluffy thing <laughs> that is not about anything. What, what is the story in it for me? Right. That in whatever little way I can move the needle on something or at least, at least present, represent an idea or something more than just because then that's pedestrian. And what excites me is not pedestrian. What excites me is, 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 is going for it, going for something, fighting for something. Even if my lines don't suggest it, it says nothing about what this character does, you know, outside of the lines, right? The scene may be about this, right. but in whatever I've worked on, maybe on his spare time, this guy does volunteer. Maybe on his spare time, he goes, he goes home and works, works on the job as a cop, you know, even though he's clocked out. Because why? Because he wants to bring closure to a family. Because he wants to help a victim. He wants to give a voice to, 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 to the voiceless victims who can't speak anymore. And, and, and I, maybe I don't have any lines that represent that directly. But if in my work I'm doing that, I'm still fighting for something. And somehow, some way, I have to believe that it's going to come across. You know what I mean? No matter yeah. how subtle, you know? You know, so a while ago, I had, um, I won't say who it was, but I had a conversation with somebody about, I wanted to start a show and I wanted to be able to get into whatever it is we, I want with the guests. It can be about anything. I don't want to be solely focusing on just entertainment. I, I do, but I also want to focus on the finer details about 
you know, the struggles and then your, your reason behind going through those struggles, sticking with the, uh, with the arts, if you will, knowing full well that you're not, in some people's eyes may not be perceived as a successful career in terms of like Leonardo DiCaprio type status, you know, like you're, most people have that perception about you have to make it in the business to be at that level. Right. And when I've come to realize that's not, that's not really the goal in my, in how I perceive it now, because I used to think that not anymore. Um, and I had, I had a recent conversation with another director where I, I and, so, and another actress as well, where I said that I think one of the dumbest things to ask is, you know, how can I make it in the business? I don't think it's about that anymore. So when I started this show, it was the intention to talk to people in the industry because there's something about the underdogs. That's how I always look. That's how I always look to reach out to the underdogs, the ones that no one ever knows about. Because I, I think some people are like, you know, who have you talked to that's in the inter entertainment show? Well, I've talked to this person, that person, never heard of them. Yeah. That, that may be true. You may not have heard, of, but you've seen their work. What have they been in? I'll name like, oh, I, oh, so they were in that scene. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that movie, but yeah, I remember that movie. So they always, there's always a connective tissue there, but right. there always has to be some sort of high profile work for them to know it exists out there. And then simply right. being in it is almost like, oh, wow, you were in that movie in a private conversation. But if I do it with someone else, that's not conversing with you directly they have a perception about that, about what, you know, what you've done has, and so on. But so I'm, I'm kind of rambling off it, but the point I'm getting is that when I'm conversing with somebody in the, in the industry, I really want to get into about whatever it is that they want to talk about. So the fact that you went off and spoke and, and told your, your perspective and told your stories and me answering my question, that to me is extremely important. And I think that's extremely important for people to understand that this may be a polarizing thing that either they're going to agree with it or not, or they may, may whoever watches the show, uh, they will probably say, I like this show, but I don't like that episode because it was too much about politics or what, you know, personal beliefs or whatever right. the case may be. Can't control it now. <laughs> right. Well, I'm just saying like, I don't care. That's the point yeah. I'm getting. I don't really care. I don't care about if it's going to have a negative or positive impact in terms of like, whether they don't like the episode or now the show because we got into these political topics and, you know, others, uh, other different uh, topics that are important to highlight here. And that can be a, a very, it can be a, a, a thing that could, you know, divide people. I think it's important to talk about that because, you know, if I'm, if, you know, you're, you've been in movies before that are really, really high profile. I don't care for the promotional aspect. Of it. I've said on more than one occasion where, if I'm if if you're in a conversation because I actually came across one that you did for one of your movies that you've done, uh, where it's just tell us about the experience of working with a director, you know, and like yeah, I don't learn right. anything from you in talking about the film like that under that right because that, that's just promotional material, right? Right. right, right, right so right, right. I can I can I can hear that, but anyone else could have said the exact same thing you said, and I would have never got any sort of connection other than it's the story sounds interesting and the approach of the character sounds intriguing. Right. Right. or whether it is or not for the person, it, it's up to right. them. But if I have a conversation with you or anyone else, and we have a deep conversation, my goal is that if they listen to you, whether they agree with you or not, if they are interested, he's been in that movie and he said these things, I got to watch the film. And in turn, hopefully bring more awareness, not yeah. to make you rich or famous, because I mean, honestly, rich and famous, I don't think is really the, the, the goal in life that people should achieve for. I really think it's about, the opportunities that are presented to you that I've heard this person talk and therefore I'm interested in what they're doing because I, I understand their, their position now. Yeah. So, you know, Rob, just one last thing, you know, sure. based on what you just said, you know, a, a lot of that stuff, man, honest to God. And again, one person's opinion, right? So who, do, you know, one person's opinion, right, right. but, but the way I see it, at least in terms of uh, what I've experienced and everything in this business and everything, a lot of that stuff is something that's just out of your hands. It just happens to you anyway. Yeah. The only thing that you can control, the only thing that you can control, um, and this is really, really important. So, hey, man, young actors out there, um, I'm sorry if I sound preachy and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but if you get something out of this, I, um, I hope you get this, okay? I don't know what talent is. I have actors who I admire, you know, some actors I, you know, that I don't think are as good as it. We all have that, right? It's right. subjective, right. right? But I'll tell you what I do have that I think works for me. And that's this. I know what my values are. I know what I care about. I know the hill that I'm going to die on. I know that 
I know the lines that I, I, I that, that, that are, are lines in the sand for me. I know what matters to me. I know what I believe is right and wrong. And so whatever that is for you and that, when that lines up with something that I'm playing, then I'm going to be much better at it. I'll be the first person to admit I am not somebody that can do all things. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not going to stand here and say I'm the greatest fucking actor of all time. That's like a chameleon could do all these freaking things. No. But acting's a whole lot easier, at least for me, when I know I can stand in the shoes of this character because I, I, I think my values and theirs match up. Right now, that isn't to say that there aren't a whole lot of other skills through drama school and all the stuff that we attain over the years and we get smarter about how we do things and, and we become smarter storytellers and all that stuff is true. But at the core of who I am, when I can be me, an authentic version of me, then I don't have to quote unquote put it on or lie or act. And then I can behave truthfully and stuff. So and it's also something that grounds me. You know, I'm okay. I'm really okay with the things that don't come my way. I understand that there are people that are probably better for this or that and whatever. And I don't get hung up on it. You know why? Because I don't live and die by every single audition. I don't live and die by every single role. I just played the greatest role that I ever got to play on camera in my 17 and a half plus year career. I'm so grateful for it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And still at the end of the day, whether I'm a garbage man, whether I shine shoes for a living, whether I get to act again, whether I go off and do something else, I know who I am and I like who I am and that's what grounds me. And that's what sustains me through this business because I do not judge my value. I do not judge my worth. I do not judge my humanity and my contributions you know, to society or not based on the status of a role that I've played or the, or, or, or the size of the paycheck that came with it. It's so easy. It's so easy in whatever walk of life that we're in, and especially in something like the entertainment business, where you start to judge yourself, right? You're great because you've gotten nominated for something. Or you suck because you're just, you, you know, you're barely even doing regional theater. Get that out of your head. That is not true. I don't care if you've never worked a goddamn day in your life in a regional theater play. Nobody knows you. You're not famous and you're not making a living as an actor. You're valid. You're worthy. If you're a good person with a kind heart, you're already doing so much more than so many other people. So, so be grounded in who you are. Know what your values are. Stick by them. Live by them. Live by them and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't 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 judge yourself by 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 things that are out of your control, right? But the things that you can control, your work ethic, your focus, your integrity, those things, if you have them, you'll be okay. And I'm sorry if that sounds preachy as fuck, but I think it's it's important. It's important because so many people can be can can be seduced by the other nonsense and become people and go against their own natures and become people. That, 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 that they really don't like, you know what I mean? It can lead you down, you know, paths that, 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 that aren't healthy for you. So, so don't despair, know that it's a marathon. Uh, be gentle with yourself, be patient. It's the hardest thing to learn, yeah. you know, but, but, but please don't judge yourself on, uh, don't judge yourself by that dangly, shiny Hollywood thing. You know what I'm saying? If you're a good person, you're a good person, whether you're making a million dollars or, 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 or 15 bucks an hour and, and therefore valid and worthy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, I sound preachy as fuck right now. It's kind of sounds gross, but, but I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. So well, thank, I, thank you, Rob. Thanks so much for giving me this platform, brother. 
Yeah, you know, no, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do this, especially during this uh, holiday week. As I was recording for everyone who watches this, because it'll be this will be uploaded in a few weeks from now. But um, this is something that I was I was wanting to, you know, really get in depth with you, but it went an entirely different direction, which I was fully appreciative here. So there's no there's not a single part in the conversation where I felt like, um, you know, we should stop because if it, if it was if it was up to me, I would we would keep keep going for as long as we can, but. There's a there's a lot that I have picked up on from this conversation that I think you know in a lot of ways gives me a, a new perspective on how I, how to look at certain things. Some that I was already familiar with, but other things that, again, it's all the individual's perspective about what they've gone through in their career that I think is very uh, important to consider and what they've and and how they've how they've been able to formulate these thought processes, how they were able to how they where they walked, how they got into the business, and then where they are with it now, and then and to understand that because it's not the same for everybody. That's why it's important to hear these stories um, where you have to understand the realities of what it is like for a person, whether it be in this entertainment industry or any other industry in general, it's not going to be the same across the board for everybody. And to hear their their stories for me is extremely important because you've shared a perspective at a point in time of your life where the climate has been all over the place when it comes to certain subject matters. And here you have experienced that. And then you're in a position where you have some more insight that most others probably will never have. And if someone will look back at this 20 years from now, and look at this interview and say, holy shit, I did not know that, but they have to do the work and finding that information. And by simply listening to that, hopefully they'll endure because I think every minute really did matter about what you have said here is extremely important, but I know I'm kind of going off on a ramble as well too, but I think that's where you and I understand where, where we're both coming from with this here. But otherwise, listen, I, I know that you don't have really a social media account, so I'm going to do my absolute yeah. best to try to go ahead and just bring more awareness to the best of my ability for you and anything else you're working on here. But otherwise, um, you know, if there's anything else that uh, you want to say here before we sign off here and then, you know, from there, we'll just uh, close off. Yeah. You know, just to reiterate, you know, um, 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 you know, as much preaching as I did, I, I, the, the, the one thing that I do preach for myself is to keep an open mind, know that I don't know everything and keep learning and stuff like that. So, so wherever you're at in your processes, you know, whoever's watching, right. And you're kind of like, um, struggling or you're feeling down about something, just know that you are still on a journey. Sometimes it's so easy to look at a, a wall or a block or an impediment as oh shit now this is a sign that I'm not supposed to be doing this you know you know I should stop I should give up I should quit I should and that's not and I, I'm telling you no 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 if you love something there's no reason to ever quit you could zig you could zag you could take breaks you could do this you could do that but there's no reason to ever ever make these definitive kinds of 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 decisions. If you love something that you do, there's a way that you can still find a way to do it and to do it and to get better at it. You know, if you're not where you where you want to be today, don't despair. Just work towards it. Keep an open mind. Believe in yourself. But most of all, know yourself. Get to know what that is. You know, especially for really, really young people um, who might be in drama school right now, you know. Um, and I'm not telling you who you should be, but find out for yourself and it, to be grounded in who you are and to like who you are. And if you do, you're going to be okay, no matter what happens. I believe that a hundred percent, a hundred percent. All right. So on that note, we're going to close this off here. But again, man, thank you very much for what you said. I think you have said something that's really profound that is also very realistic as well too. But otherwise, man, I'll leave you to it. You enjoy the rest of your week in here. Yeah, and, man. um, I appreciate the time you've given me. Uh, your day. Dude, dude, one love, brother. Thank you so much, Rob. I appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it. Awesome conversation.